NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One from Tigertown in Clemson, South Carolina. Tonight, it's the Vanderbilt Commodores in town, a win away from the Super Regionals battling Clemson at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Vandy led by some young guns this season, a one win away from the Super Regionals once again with a different crew. Seth Beer is one of the best power hitters in the country, trying to propel Clemson to the next round. Monty Lee would love to do that for the first time in his three seasons here as the head coach. Last night, Vanderbilt got a 4-3. Clemson beat St. John's in a thrilling elimination game earlier today. Clemson has to win twice. Vandy needs to win just once. I'm Taylor Zarzer with Chris Burke. It's great to have you here in Clemson. Berkey, a month ago, who in the world would have thought Vandy would be in this position? Well, not me. I don't even know maybe even if Tim Corbin foresaw this team developing the way I have. you got to give him a lot of credit. This is a team that is really young, but he's put the pieces together. They're playing awfully well. They are, and their bullpen has been terrific lately. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first for Clemson, their bats woke up a little earlier yeah. today as the Tigers offense took it to the Johnnies. They, they're playing at a high level. You know, the First couple games maybe a little tight, but today the the offense was playing or the ballpark was playing small. The offense got going. Seth Beer launched his 22nd home run. They sputtered for a few innings, but then in the sixth, finally with two outs, Kyle Wilkie, the sophomore catcher, with the big double that tied the game up. Chris Williams, the senior first baseman, put him ahead by two more. They added on from there. It got interesting late, but they held on nine big runs, eight of those, Taylor, with two outs. Yeah, and again, they have to win two games. Got to win this one tonight, yeah. win it, and then win again tomorrow night. Vandy just needs to win once. And last night, Clemson had him in a good spot, up 3 nothing. Vandy scored four, and the bullpen said good night. Yeah, that's what they're doing right now. They're shortening the ball game. The back end of the bullpen is just pitching lights out. Last night, it was the combination of the sophomore Jackson Gillis, a power lefty with a really good changeup. He got him through a couple innings, and then in the eighth and the ninth, it was Reed Schaller, who's up to 100, a high-end fastball and a real slider as well. And then Chandler Day, who makes his living with a three-pitch mix, fastball into the mid-90s, and a really good changeup, and he shut the door. So Vandy's almost making this thing like a six-inning game, Taylor. You ready for this one? Let's do it, man. All right, let's get it on. Vandy a win away. Clemson needs two. Game six of the Clemson Regional is coming up next. Both of these teams have made it there many times. Vanderbilt won the national championship four years ago. Tonight, Monty Lee turns to Spencer Strider, his outstanding freshman. He is outstanding from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's got really good stuff. You look at the opponent batting average, they're just hitting 206 against him. The command can be an issue, though. He's had trouble firing strikes, but it's a high spin rate fastball up to 93 miles an hour, real slider and changeup. If he can limit the free passes, they think he can get deep into this ballgame. Probably the best pure stuff of all their starters. Austin Martin has been the catalyst for Vanderbilt all year. The freshman leading off in center field. Steven Scott moves up to the two hole tonight. Team is totally different when J.J. Blade is healthy in the lineup. Batting third. And Connor Kaiser best defensive shortstop, quite possibly in all of college baseball. The cleanup hitter, Ethan Paul, hit a home run last night that was a big one in the game that we will get to coming up. Tim Corbin, the head coach at Vanderbilt, responsible for almost all of the program's success. Yeah, he's built a dynasty there. It's, it's incredible what he's done, 13 straight, longest streak in the SEC. They've been to the Super Six of the last eight years, trying to make that seven of nine with a win here tonight. Clemson had a 9-4 lead against St. John's in the ninth inning and held on for a 9-8 win earlier today. Did have to use their closer, Gilliam, in that game. So we'll see how Coach Lee uses his bullpen tonight as Strider misses outside to Martin. That's in there, one and one. 
Martin, Scott, and Blade do up in the first. Austin Martin had a couple of hits last night against Clemson. Chris, you were mentioning the stuff that Strider has leading the team in strikeouts, only allowing eight extra base hits this year, just two home runs. Missing yeah, three and one. Which is pretty unusual for a kid who likes to pitch up. I mean, Monty Lee talks about it, kind of a high spin rate kid who has success at the top of the zone, but those numbers you just referenced shows that guys don't square him up all that often. Martin misses on a hitter's count. It's full. Now that's the opposite right there. That's a sinker with some real depth to it. Disappearing two-seamer there on a 3-1 count. Hit on the ground, right at Davidson, one down. Monty Lee has been the model of consistency as the head coach at Clemson in his three seasons in the upstate. Took the College of Charleston as alma mater to the Super Regionals four years ago, trying to do that for the first time here. Yeah, you know, it's a big game for Monty tonight. It's a big, big next couple days if they're able to win this one. As, as well as his team has performed, in the regular season the last three years. They just hadn't quite gotten over the, the edge in the postseason, hoping for a couple big games here left in this regional. Steven Scott moves from six to second in Coach Corbin's lineup tonight, had a healthy cut there and missed. Scott was one for three in that game and scored in the second inning. Playing a big time shift against him. They got Jordan Green out in shallow right field. Uh oh, hits that one a ton. Beer can only watch. It's out there by the Cajun Cafe. One nothing, Vandy. Hey now. <laughs> This ball leaves the facility in a heartbeat. That ball was still on its way up as it went over the Cajun Cafe. A high fastball. We talked about only two home runs all year. There's that fastball at the top of the zone. And Steven Scott gets the barrel to the back of that one. And that ball is obliterated over the right field stands. 13th home run for the backstop for Vandy. Bladey takes ball one, so already one of Corbin's moves has paid off to move him up in the lineup. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, get him as many ABs as you possibly can right now. And they, they hit him second in game one, and what I like about putting him there is when you get Austin Martin on base, it forces the other team, because he's such a base-stealing threat, Austin Martin, it, it forces the other team to throw him a lot of uh, fastballs. Now, Martin wasn't on base there, but I, I like Scott in the two-hole. Strider a little wild to start things off. Sophomore from Panama Beach. Mandy's a different team when he plays. They're 25 and 10 with him, 9 and 14 without. And it's a four pitch walk. Last night, Connor, Connor Kaiser had that big base hit to give Vanderbilt the lead and help them get to this position for the second consecutive year. Nice situational stretch in that inning for Vanderbilt. Got him on, got him over, got him in. Kaiser with a drawn in infield shot one up the middle. And that was the difference in the ball game. The bullpen made it stick. St. John's Scored three times on Clemson in the first inning earlier today. Clemson was able to erase that deficit and get to this point. And Vandy already with one here in the first as Kaiser flies out to Wharton, two down. That'll bring up Philip Clark, the designated hitter, also one of Coach Corbin's catchers, who he has to put in the lineup now even when he's not receiving five, pitches. 
Uh, this kid's a hitter. This is one of the best pure hitters in this lineup. Just a freshman. You're going to hear that a lot from us tonight about this Vanderbilt club. They got four in the lineup. Five if you count Hickman, the starting pitcher. But this is a pure bat right here. This is his 200th at bat of the season. Batting over 300. Outside 2 0. Clemson, the home team tonight. They were actually the visitors in their own park last night. Trying to force another game against Vanderbilt tomorrow. You know, we've had so much weather in the area, and sometimes we've had some clouds roll in, and the air got a little thicker, but. Yeah, I talked about the offense feeling or the ballpark feeling offensive early in the day. It still has that similar feel to it. The sunshine earlier, 6 o'clock start. Chance for a lot of long balls in this one again, I think. And you got a couple teams feeling pretty good with the way they're swinging the bat. Again, it's not a big ballpark from a dimension standpoint. So it's a pretty good day to get the ball in the air. You know that man knows how to do it. He's done it twice so far in this regional. Clark pops this one up. Davidson goes back. And Vanderbilt puts one on the board. Steven Scott launches one over the right field wall. Vanderbilt a win away from the Supers. Vanderbilt gets one in the first on a Steven Scott home run. Now they send Mason Hickman to the mound. This is his 12th collegiate start and his first in the NCAA tournament. It is, and he's been pretty reliable this year, coming off a couple rough starts. He's given up four and six in his last two times out and hadn't pitched them all that deep into the ball game. It's another Vandy freshman that's made a very big impact on this club. He will throw strikes. That's one thing, but he the, the, the issue with him is command over control. He will throw any pitch in any count, but he's got to get to the edges of the strike zone. Key Air Meredith will lead off. He's the designated hitter for Clemson. Had not started a game since late April, and now he's starting both ends of a double header today. Yeah, struggled in the first one, but they scored nine, and Monty's going to run him back out there again. Healthy cut, 0-1. Logan Davidson, who has been leading off most of the last few weeks, is back in the two-hole. The big hitter, Seth Beer, batting third tonight. 0-2. Oh, Interesting to watch Hickman. He has not pitched in 15 days. I'm sure he's anxious to get back out there. The end of the season was not kind to him. Tennessee, three innings, six walks, four earned runs. Kentucky, five and two-thirds, made it out there for a while, but six earned runs. So I'm sure he's been anxious to get back out on the bump and come out there with his best stuff. Best start came in late March against LSU, seven-inning complete game. Struck out nine LSU hitters that day. I was there for that one. He he looked like he was going to be the freshman pitcher of the year. I mean, it was an incredible performance. It's on the ground. Ethan Paul, the everyday second baseman, one out. The rest of the Clemson lineup looks like this with Davidson coming to the plate, followed by his buddy, Mr. Beer, who now has 22 home runs on the season. Chris Williams was outstanding last weekend in the ACC tournament, and Kyle Wilkie had a huge hit earlier today to help Clemson get to this position. Davidson reached four times against Vanderbilt last night. Takes low, ball one. All weekend you've been raving about this guy and his potential. Yeah, I think he's got a chance to be one of the top five or ten picks next year. 
the, the strikeouts are higher than I think you'd like to see for a hitter that has the potential to be drafted that high, but the ceiling is, is about as high as any college kid that I've covered. I mean, power, real power from both sides of the plate, and it's been consistent from both sides of the plate. Can definitely play the position and a frame. I mean, look at that frame. He's still got at least 15 or 20 pounds to put on where he could still play shortstop, but if you needed to, maybe like a Chipper Jones, move him to third. First class kid. He obviously has major league pedigree. His old man Mark played in the, in the big league. So I just there's a lot to like about this youngster. Old man graduated from college this year, coming back as a student assistant. That's a great story. 3-1. Yeah. Yeah, Mark is a neat guy. I got a chance to spend a little time with him yesterday. Just a humble guy. He's he really enjoyed his time being around the team and coaching. Back there in the purple shirt. Still looks like he could play, honestly. I mean, you can see where Logan gets it from. And he takes a called strike three. Davidson did not think so. Well, that's what Hickman's going to do when, when he's a command guy. And he gets hurt when the ball's in the middle of the plate. But that is a dotted four-seamer on the outside edge. And the call goes Hickman's way. Davidson doesn't like it. I think it was borderline both directions, but a really well-executed pitch. Chances are neither Davidson agreed with that one. That's right. Seth Beer was kind of quiet last night, but hit a home run in the first game of this day and belts that one out into right field, but right at Blade. Clemson goes down in order in the first, trailing one nothing. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? Dogpiling for a national championship back in 2014. Corbs, as they call him, has made three trips to the College World Series in his time as the head coach of the Commodores, 13 consecutive NCAA appearances and a school record and wins. It's also put 14 players into the first round of the Major League Baseball draft. Really remarkable what he's done in Nashville. On the west end, Chris Williams will lead off here in the top of the second. Hits it on the ground at Grayson Bird. One down. Vandy has been led by a bunch of freshmen this time around. I don't know that many forecasted their opportunity to get back to a super regional, but they did have the best freshman class in America, according to many. As many as seven true freshmen have started. They actually had six in the same game against Auburn earlier this year. And there was one point where they were below 500 in the SEC, and you wondered if they get into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, they've had two different six-game losing streaks this season, and combine youth with arguably the, the most depth that the SEC has ever seen, and you're going to have some, some ups and downs, but through it all, Vanderbilt has been able to kind of find their way. They've, they've settled on a lineup. They've settled on a, a pitching rotation and a back end of the bullpen, and you look at the product on the field right now, it looks different than it did at times throughout the season, but they're playing like a team that has a tremendous amount of confidence. They don't look like a group of freshmen anymore. 1-1 one, one to Paul is inside. Maybe the turning point was at Auburn. They were swept there May 4th, 5th, and 6th, just un under a month ago. Lost 14-0 in the Sunday game. Coach Corbin goes on the bus and says, guys, we are fine. Let's have a nice ride back to Nashville. Don't be down on yourself. Yeah. We still have this. We're okay. They lost to Tennessee Tech a couple days later, but then took two of three from Tennessee, swept Kentucky, and here they are, a win away from another Super Regional. That's hit right at Williams, who flips to Strider, two down. Well, I think, you know, there's – an interesting dynamic with this club. It's essentially, besides Bladé, it's it's freshmen and juniors. 
And so you get a whole bunch of freshmen that are trying to figure it out. You got some juniors that are in the always hard to predict draft year. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're a junior at Vanderbilt, there's always draft expectations. And let's be honest, for the most part, a lot of the juniors have not performed quite as well as, as they would have hoped. Julian Infante, who's up right now, was supposed to be kind of the rock of this lineup, and he's struggled throughout the course of this year. But as I said, through it all, they have now found a rhythm and a lineup that they're starting to really look like a team that, that believes they can, they can make a run. Those juniors, it's well documented. They've been through a lot, given what happened two years and one day ago with Donnie Everett. Fonte struggling this season. And that evidently is low. 3-0. and oh. And they, they are very clear about that, that it's something that's never going to go away, having to process, process what happened with Everett so tragic two years ago. That's in there, strike one. Tucker Day, of course, wrote a moving tribute to him online recently yeah Chandler was was with him in the water and so that's obviously a huge part of the story but the I think they've done a great job of moving past I think they've done a great job of moving past the the grief and on to the kind of celebrating his life his legacy his parents are still a huge part of the program and it, Tim Corbin has done a fantastic job of navigating that situation. That's outside ball four. Chances are we'll see Chandler Day again tonight if Vanderbilt has a lead in the ninth. In fact, we're going to interview him in a, in a few innings. And he's a, he's a huge piece of, of what they've done here down the stretch. They've inserted him as the closer. And anytime you've got a, a guy on the back end of your bullpen that you just know is going to get those last three outs, the rest of the game has a different feel to it. Jason Gonzalez has an opposite field home run in this series. One of Coach Corbin's great freshmen swings through that one. And just to put a bow on trying to quantify, okay, well, you guys say they're young. How do we know how successful of a year they're having given how young they are? Well, they're one of two teams in the country to start six freshmen in a game. Wake Forest was the other. Freshmen have made 225 combined starts. That's third in the country. And true freshman pitchers have made 22 starts. That's third in the country. So by any measure, Yes. This is one of the youngest teams in baseball. Well, and, and they they were very upfront early on that they weren't real sure what they had. Vanderbilt never rebuilds. They always reload, but some years are going to look different than others. And, and honestly, Clemson was in a similar spot, at least with their pitching. They returned zero starts from, from last year's team, and kids like Spencer Strider, who's on the mound right now, have been asked to play significant roles. They haven't been given the luxury of being able to watch and learn. And so both these clubs, especially on the mound, have, have been young this year. Yeah, Jake Higginbotham's the only one that was a returning starter, yet he didn't make a start all of last season. So all of these guys are I guess green to this situation. A lot of youth yeah. in Clemson on display tonight. 1-2 to Gonzalez. There goes Infante, doesn't matter. Gonzalez swings through it. Spencer Strider overcoming the home run he gave up to Scott. His bats ready to come to life. That's one of the best programs in college football. One, two, three in the country. Every single year, it'll be no different in 2018. You can book it. They're in the Sweet 16 this season. Coach Brownell doing an excellent job on the hardwood over across the street. The Little John and the baseball team is great every year. This team is in the postseason. 
each and every year. 31 of the last 32 years they've made the NCAA tournament. Shout out to the soccer program, too. Tiger Town is a sports town. It is. You, you've been using the phrase all weekend, kind of a golden era in Clemson sports. It certainly feels like it. They got facilities popping up all over the place. The softball program is going to get a brand new stadium. Of course, we got, what do they call that, Dabble World? Yes. The Dabble World on the left field wall. This place is Doug Kingsmore Stadium has had a recent up facelift that is spectacular. One of my favorite places that I've been to. It is, as you said, a, a fun time to be a Tiger. I know this game is on SEC Network tonight. There are so many similarities to seven, eight, nine great SEC programs in this one that measures up to any athletic department. And they take pride in that, too, competing against South Carolina and have an impressive winning streak against them in football at the moment. They play in, in baseball, they play Georgia every year. They, they do a home and home with Georgia every year. So they get their fill of SEC opponents. Chris Williams, two balls, two strikes to lead off the second inning. Cleanup hitter facing true freshman Mason Hickman. Kyle Wilkie, who had a nice afternoon, and Drew Wharton after him. And that's strike three. And just like so many of those SEC programs, there's pressure to win here. They expect you to get to the Supers and to Omaha. They've gotten to this level each of the last three seasons, hosting in Clemson, lost to the Pokes two years ago, lost in the game seven, the final game of the regional final to Vandy last year. And here they are facing elimination tonight with Wilkie up and one out down a run in the second. Yeah, it's it's a big game. I mean, there's really no way around it. You see the Omaha in the back of the hat. I mean, that's that's the expectation around here. The legacy that was left by Jack Leggett was this is a program that's going to compete to go to Omaha. And Monty Lee was brought in to, to bring that back. And they've hosted, which is the first piece of, of usually getting to Omaha. But for whatever reason, just haven't gotten past the first round. Another opportunity right here in front of them. If they can beat Vanderbilt twice in a row, they can get to the Supers for the first time since 2010. Wilkie, two for five earlier today with a big two-run double. Hits that one in front of Austin Martin for Clemson's first hit. Clemson has been to the fifth most NCAA tournament appearances. 16th time hosting a regional. Last time they made it to Omaha was 2010. Also the last time they made a Supers. It's been a while, and Taylor, obviously we've been here all weekend. It, this is a fan base that cares. I mean, they, they are, are into every pitch. They are into every pitch, and so they are desperate to get back to the Supers, and they got a tremendous chance to host a Super now that Florida State has lost in the Tallahassee Regional. It's a guarantee if they win the regional that they'll be back here next weekend. I guess there would be a little bit of debate if Vanderbilt won the region, though I guess Oklahoma's in the driver's seat down there in, in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. Mississippi State, Oklahoma playing tonight. First game of that regional final. Chopper up the middle could be two, six to three. And the Vanderbilt defense has been showing off all season. Maybe the best defensive shortstop in the country right there, folks. Connor Kaiser got the read, goes up and gets it. Left foot on the back, finish the play yourself. That's why he's going to win a gold glove. Gonna win a gold glove. We are in Clemson, South Carolina, NCAA Baseball Regionals, presented by Capital One. Vanderbilt leading Clemson 1-0 in this regional final. And then the winner of the Oklahoma-Mississippi State regional final down in Tallahassee will meet the winner of this one next weekend. Could be here, could be in Nashville, might be in Norman, Oklahoma, I guess, maybe. Maybe Starkville, who knows? Could be in Starkville. 
We know it will be in Clemson if they win. That's right. They control their own destiny. And as we were talking about last inning, that what an environment this would be if they were able to pull this off and host either Oklahoma or Mississippi State. You kidding me? The place would be rocking. I might just come sit in the stands yeah, with you. Yeah, maybe we'll just come hang out. Martin grounded out his first time. Up through the middle, base hit, pass Davidson. Martin with a leadoff single. So here you go. This is the perfect scenario. Last at bat, we saw Steven Scott get an elevated heater and launch it into the trees in right field over the Cajun Cafe, an absolute no-doubter. And this is the scenario Tim Corbin envisions when he puts Steven Scott in the two-hole. you got your best base dealer on first, your most dangerous fastball hitter up, the right side of the infield open. A really good situation for the Vanderbilt offense to start the third. Martin has 21 steals on the season. Doesn't have one in this regional yet. But Vanderbilt as a team has 40 more than they had last year, 94 as a school. All one. And Strider's going to give you a shot too. He's a he's a leg kicker. It's not a it's not a slide step guy. So he'll he'll give you a shot to steal a bag. Again, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense with how dangerous Scott is of a fastball hitter. Not going. Ball two. count with the fastest player on Bandy's team standing on first. Not going. Strike one. Now, this, now you, you don't go on the 2-0 pitch because you know you're probably getting a fastball. It's a decent pitch to throw on. 2-1 to me is a great pitch to run because if he goes change up, you'll probably steal it. If he throws another fastball in the zone, Scott's probably going to rip it. So it's a good time to get some run action going here if you're Vanderbilt. Allen, the first base umpire, is right there in position. Bluffs, Ooh. foul ball. Looked like maybe he wanted to go and just didn't quite trust it. A little frustrated. You can see the look on his face. He, Strider's giving it to him. He's probably one three five one four. Which, if you're an elite base dealer, you're going to get to second from your leadoff position somewhere around 3-3. So if the pitcher's 1-3 and the catcher's 2-0, there's your math, right? So anytime a guy's above a 1-3, that's a green light special. Ball three. Same applies to 2-1 on 3-2. Yeah I, th yeah, I think you're going right here on 3-2. And you notice that that's Strider's best move to me for – there's not enough base dealers that extend their lead. When you see a guy's best move and you're safe easy, that's when you get another half step. Most plays at second base between out or safe are often a bang, bang call. So if, you, if you're safe easy on a guy's best move, you, you extend your lead the next time you go out. Mm. He was definitely going there. Definitely going there. A little slow on his reaction 
he was hanging in there the last possible second. But, again, if you're going to steal bases, you don't really care if they know you're going. At some point, they got to throw it to the plate. He is. And it's pop foul. And this is kind of that scenario we're talking about. Steven Scott, so dangerous. Red hot coming into this regional. Had, had homered in six of his last eight games. He's already homered in this one. So what is it, seven of his last 11 now. Just the top of the third inning and Martin looks like he's been in a tough mutter. That's part of it. That's ball four. And the first two are on base in front of Blade with nobody out. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interactive brackets, go to NCAA. Dot com. We'll be paying attention to that all night. I told you about Mississippi State and Oklahoma. NC State has to beat Auburn twice. Hatters are 2-0 and playing the Pokes tonight. Stetson might be the team this year from a smaller conference, kind of like Coastal Carolina yeah. two years ago. They got a true ace. Blade, strike one. The Aggies got eliminated today down in Austin. I'm sure that doesn't displease the, the Longhorn fans, even though they might have liked to have seen them again in the regional final. And congrats to Chris Lamonis and the Indiana Hoosiers. They will play for the regional championship against the Longhorns of Texas. CNC State beating Army. They'll play Auburn tonight. That one gets away from Wilkie. And each runner advances 90 feet. Kind of yanks a change up here. And Kyle Wilkie does his best to get around it. Just see how he just yanks that thing. Wilkie tries to get around it and can't. And boy, this is a great scenario if you're JJ Blade. Ground ball to second base, you get a ribby, you move the runner over. Vanderbilt in a really good spot. Martin's down at third, Scott at second, with nobody out in the third inning. Scott already with a home run in this game against Strider. Be very careful right here. You know Bladet's trying to get the head out. Get that pitch away. Pops it up. That is Davidson calling off green, one down. And that's big time right there for Spencer Strider. Climbed the ladder with a fastball. He was trying to rush him in. Four-seamer kind of tailed back over the plate, but that's about as good a result as you could hope for right there. Now Kaiser gets a chance to drive in a run. Clemson bullpen already in action. Griffin, the right-hander, you saw warming down there. Can't wait too long if the game gets out of hand. Meanwhile, Kaiser at the plate with two on in scoring position. That is hit a ton. Over Jolly in left field, three-run homer, four-nothing doors. Wow. 
the junior class coming to play tonight. Steven Scott has already launched one. Now their all-conference shortstop, Connor Kaiser, gets a hanging slider up in the zone, Taylor, and this ball is demolished to left center field above the concourse into the seats in left center field and the Commodores of Vanderbilt with a three spot here in the third go up by four. Strike one to Philip Clark. I was just about to ask you with first base open how careful Strider might be with Kaiser. Well, this early in the ball game, you just gotten Blade, arguably their best hitter, to pop up. He was probably feeling pretty confident. Went with, you know, just kind of a get me over slider, and it just he threw a cement mixer up there. And Kaiser, who now has four home runs and 38 RBIs, it was a long period of time in the season he didn't have any home runs. So similar to Steven Scott, he has found the power stroke late in the season. That's why he's hitting in the cleanup spot all of a sudden. Talking about a kid that, that spent the better part of his career hitting in the bottom third of this Vanderbilt order. This year he's kind of hit all over the place. But right now, lockdown shortstop who's hitting for power. He's playing at a very high level. Strider's already thrown 52 pitches. hit to left field behind Jolly and out of here. The Tiger fans are throwing it back as the Commodores are putting on a clinic. Vandy making this place look like Williamsport, Taylor. I mean, the ball is flying out of here tonight. Second straight night. Third straight game we've seen a Vanderbilt player go oppo. This time the talented freshman, Phillip Clark, stays on a heater and shoots it over the left field wall. Looks almost like a photocopy of the ball Ethan Paul hit last night. Just a beautiful stroke to the backside of the field. And that's going to be it for Spencer Strider. Two of Vandy's catchers have hit home runs. One's the DH tonight. The other is playing the position, and that's it for Spencer Strider. The Vanderbilt Commodores are a win away from the Super Regionals, and the Tiger fans want none of it. It was a 1-0 ball game two batters ago, and Connor Kaiser says, see ya, making it 4-0. Mandy was just about sitting back down in the dugout, and Philip Clark said, wait a second, guys, I want in on this, and now Owen Griffith is relieved Spencer Strider out of the Clemson bullpen. Griffith has made a couple of appearances, has made 12 appearances now on the season, a sophomore for Macon. Facing Pat DeMarco here with the bases empty with one out in the second, in the third, rather. I think most people here are just stunned yes. at what they watched. Yes. A serious haymaker thrown by the Commodores to start this ball game. Some loud home runs. All right, Vandy's looking to miss his, make history tonight. Four teams have won back-to-back -back regionals on the road. Most recently, Maryland. DeMarco strikes out, but Vandy would be the first one of those five to do it in the same city 
two consecutive years. Each of those four went to two different places. And come back here and do that again. Four time looking to, to, to join that list as well. We could have two teams do it in the same year. They're out in Stanford. Which leads to a, a bigger conversation about sending visiting teams that want a regional back to the same regional the next year. Two down for Ethan Paul. He takes strike one. Vanderbilt finished sixth in the SEC this year. As the same spot they finished when they won the national championship four years ago. Boy, Griff is showing you some good stuff. We've seen the fastball up to 93, and that's a big old hook. Kind of reminds you of Riley Gilliam. And that high end or top of the zone breaking ball doesn't go his way right there, but the Stuff looks sharp out of the bullpen. This is inside. Strider not able to get out of the third inning in this elimination game, at least on Clemson's end. And that's ball four. So a two-out walk for Ethan Paul will send up Julian Infante. Who also walked his first time. I think for Vanderbilt, obviously, we're really early in the ballgame. But as I said, it, it's this ballpark is playing small tonight. And you just want to keep having quality of bats, keep tacking on runs. We saw it in the first game. Clemson kind of looked like they were comfortably cru cruising to victory. And, St. John's almost came back and tied them up. So keep the foot on the gas if you're Vanderbilt because this Clemson lineup is just too good. They're going to have an answer at some point. Plenty of time left in this game. So true, uh, scoring nine unanswered runs before St. John's tacked on five in the last inning. Good stop made by Wilkie there. This is Clemson's fourth game, as you see on the screen. Vanderbilt's third. Tigers did win in this situation last year to force a game on Monday night before Vandy blanked them eight zip. And that gets away, and down to second goes Paul. Anytime you see a guy with a big breaking ball, you got to – Always be ready for the ball in the dirt. Ethan Paul with a great read. Clemson fans thought Infante went, but the umpires disagreed, and now another good run scoring opportunity and a hitter's count for Infante. Take to get the barrel out here. Big part of his struggles all year long is just been tardy on the fastball. A lot of foul balls, a lot of swings and misses on the fastball this year. And now Griffith struggling to find David Yule's strike zone. Scott with a homer in the first. Kaiser and Clark with homers here in the third. It's 5 nothing as Vanderbilt is whistling in the third. And that's strike one. If Infante reaches, another guy that's homered in this regional is due up next. And that's another walk. So Gonzalez, as we mentioned, went... Oppo Taco, as Berkey said. He did. This is big time power. He wears number 99 for a reason. Kind of an Aaron Judge, maybe just a little bit of a shrunken version of Aaron Judge, but a physical specimen. 
who hit a bullet in the right field seats for the Commodores. That was the second run of the game, and that's all they would need as Drake Fellows led the charge with a game one shutout for the Doors. For whatever it's worth, that feels like that happened three weeks ago. It does. Is that, is that hard working with me? Take I that, I've take loved that. working with oh, you. Okay. I really have. It's just thinking about how long these <laughs> regionals are, which are fun to call with a great crew. It does feel like, I'm yeah, sure yeah. Evan and Mike and others would say, that does. It feels like it was weeks ago. The ESPN Networks brings you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, LHN, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip Around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. Alex Schnell. A left-hander is warming up for Coach Lee down there. As Andrew C., the pitching coach, made a visit to the mound. The Vandy St. John's game happened at lunchtime on Friday. Clemson beat Moorhead State on a walk-off hit in the 10th inning on Friday night. Vandy and Clemson last night. Clemson lost 4-3. to three. St. John's knocked out Moorhead State. Vandy, or Clemson rather, knocked out St. John's, and here we are. Swing and a miss, but another misplayed ball by Wilkie, and the Commodores move up again. Second time, third time this inning that's happened. Well, it, it's a really sharp breaking ball by Griffith. Gonzalez just swinging at the ball out of his arm. I don't even think he saw this one, a breaking ball that Bounces just behind home plate, but Wilkie never goes down to, to block it. He tries to backhand catch it in the air on a ball that really hit him right in the center of his chest protector, but he didn't square the body up and keep it in front. Free 90 feet for the Vanderbilt base runners, and here we go. Strike two. That was just a, it was weird. Breaking ball. And... You know, as Wilkie, we, we've seen him make a move on almost every ball in the dirt, but right there, he, he never even made a move to block it. Every Commodore has been to the plate here in the third. High ball two. He swung around, and after four runs, the Vanderbilt side is retired. The Clemson Tigers need to come to life. Bird starts the bottom of the third. Grayson Bird, the third baseman for Clemson tonight, with his Tigers trailing 5 0 against Mason Hickman and the Commodores. Strike one. Bird, Green, and Jolly do up here in the third. With the Clemson Tigers season hanging in the balance tonight. Hickman just keeps filling the strike zone up, Taylor. That, that's what he's known for. You see the fastball on the edge and then the changeup. He's had a nice breaking ball to this point in the ball game. Just really looks sharp early on. That's the one thing I was wondering about with my amateur eye tonight was he hadn't pitched in 15 days. Yeah. How sharp would he be early? The answer is very. Mm -hmm. Had a no decision against Kentucky on May 19th. Just missing. And that's what you give with him. Just when he's good, he, he always has control, but when he's really good, it is elite command. Fastball to both sides of the plate, a sharp breaking ball and a changeup at any time. We're seeing that here tonight. 
Bird spoils it. It's a nice piece of hitting right there. We've seen that pitch taken a few times in the ball game. Bird does a good job of exactly what you just said, spoiling that pitch. Still says go Tigers, just uses less letters to say go. Transferring from LSU to here. There's also a big debate about Death Valley between those two schools. That's it towards center field, but right at Martin, one down. That ball smoked. Jordan Green now up for the first time tonight. Green had a walk-off single in the 10th inning on Friday night to knock off Moorhead State, and he always has some colorful things written on his sleeve. And we'll see if he made a change from this game. He might need to what button up a little yeah. bit there. What we got? Oh, it's still, yeah. okay, same one. That's hit at Kaiser. Two down. There, now, you didn't ever show that much chest, did you? Where you had, like, that, I mean, wasn't, was, that wasn't the cool thing when we played. Remember Chipper, Chipper had just kind of made the, like, Kind of the modern turtleneck kind of. Remember, Chipper used to wear the real high collar yeah. deal, and I wasn't quite into that. Maybe in high school a little bit, I was doing it because Chipper was like the coolest dude ever. So everybody was doing what Chipper did, but we were at least crew collar. Nobody was going with the these kids these days. Some of them, don't, no one, you know, the Bryce Harper, no undershirt, two buttons buttoned, like you know, the whole deal. So I mean, that was aggressive right there. Very aggressive. Rob Jolly gets a start in left field. They shade him perfectly, and it's an easy inning for Mason Hickman. Vanderbilt is cruising through three. Tim Corbin's team owns the postseason. Made the Super Regionals last year, won the national championship four years ago, and he said, let's just get out of the SEC after that grind last weekend. You just get out of this conference, you know, you, you take a, a deep breath and you just say, all right, let's get the hell out of this conference and, and just move on to something else because it, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It, wear, it wears kids down and it's a lot of good baseball. And, uh, you know, you get into these one game single elimination games and they're, they're tough to play. It's so true. And you go to the SEC tournament every year, played in it. It is a grind. I mean, it, you always seem to have a weather delay this time of year. Everything gets changed around timing-wise. Nobody's sleeping at all. All the talent. As many as eight different teams could win the national championship that you got to face day in and day out. Yeah, I mean, and that that's every bit as much about the, the culmination of that 30-game 30 30 regular season schedule as it is about that tournament specifically. He, you could just see it. He was... They were so ready for a new environment, looking across the field at a team with a uniform that what they weren't familiar with. Of course, they end up going to the same, end up going to the same regional that they were in the year before. But I think there was a lot of SEC teams that felt like that this year. Martin's one for two, singled and scored in the last inning. Pops this one foul. Well, he loves this place. His Commodores won. The regionals, of course, in Clemson last year. And he was an assistant coach on the great Jack Leggett staff that went to four trips to Omaha in the late 90s and early part of this century. 2-2. Two, two. In fact, in 2002, hey, the hair that Corbs had there then was awesome. And I can't get over Kevin O'Sullivan. What a staff. That's yeah. amazing. Left to right, you got Kevin O'Sullivan, Jack Leggett, Eric Backage, and Tim Corbin. Leggett, of course, Hall of Fame skipper here from, from Clemson. O'Sullivan will be one day. Corbs as well. And Backage is starting that kind of a career at the University of Michigan. So just a super staff. And then that's why they were able to accomplish as much as they did. And Clemson, Tim Corbin's a big part of their history. And he credits his time there with Jack Leggett for making him into the coach and the man that he is. Griffith strikes out Martin to start the fourth. In fact, the other day, Corbin said he loves Monty Lee, thinks he's a great coach, is a, a good friend of his, he said. But this 
whole new great baseball facility that they have here in Clemson. That's Jack Leggett. That's that's the guys that, that built this program, and, and Monty would tell you that too. No doubt, and this is a fantastic place. I mean, the campus is beautiful. The town is incredible. The facility is as first class as it gets. The fans are as educated and passionate about baseball as any place you will find in America. And Tim Corbin was a piece of that history. It's pretty cool. Yeah, if someone from another country said, I want to learn what a college town is all about, this this hey, would be a place you would take them. You'd bring them here, no doubt. <laughs> one and one to Stephen Scott, who homered his first time up. You'd also take him to the Cajun yes. Cafe. The great people of the Cajun Cafe that have taken such good care of us this week. Thanks for the grub, y'all. Those pork chops. <laughs> I'll be dreaming about those. Berkey was a big fan of the mac and cheese as Davidson makes the catch. I'm sure he's had some of that. Two down. Yeah, the mac and cheese is off the charts. I mean, completely off the charts. Fandy has felt so at ease in this place. It, they would also tell you they were expecting to go to a new place and play in a different regional, but they're definitely comfortable here. A win away and six innings away from another super regional. I don't know what it is uh, about this guy. Maybe it's his personality, his confidence, how he goes up to every teammate, but Vandy is 25 and 10 when Blade plays. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's a pretty loud stat, and obviously he's a significant contributor physically, but there's a presence about him. The one sophomore in this lineup, pretty interesting, really. As we said, all freshman and junior, and then Blade, the lone sophomore. Very talented hitter. They were 9-14 and 14 without him, so that, that's part of the reason why you, you can't completely evaluate Vanderbilt's struggles because he wasn't there for most of it, but in the 11 games since his return, he's batting 351. 13 walks, eight runs, driven in five. <laughs> Meanwhile, Owen Griffin, Griffith for Clemson's trying to have a clean inning here in the fourth. I tell you, he's got a really good arm. There's, there's been some struggles with, with walks, but the stuff is very, very good. Chandler Day of, Clemson, of Vanderbilt will join us in just a moment with his doors up five. Vanderbilt leads Clemson five zip as we go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Chandler Day, great closer for the doors, joins us now. Chandler, your team looks awful strong so far here tonight. Yeah, we're, uh, we're hitting the ball well and we're pitching well, so usually when that happens, it's good, good idea for, uh, for us to keep doing it. <laughs> what do you think about the true freshman Mason Hickman so far? Um, I love him. I joke about it because he, he took my role as a Sunday starter, but, you know, he's pitching better, so it's kind of his, his idea to do so, and, you know, I, I root for him, and we all do, and it's cool to see a freshman come out and, and compete at such a high level. Well, let's talk about your new role because you look pretty comfortable in it. The, the, your emergence as closer has, has made a huge impact on this club, and the back end of the bullpen is pitching at a very high level. How do you like finishing out games? It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's totally different than starting. You know, you can kind of just go out and, and give it your all for one, two innings, whatever it is. And um, I think my stuff plays better in the closer role. So. What about that changeup, man? We got this this nasty, invisible changeup you got going right now. Is that? Is that a pitch that also out of the closer's role you, you throw with a higher velocity? I notice it almost playing like a split right now. Um, I don't know. I try to just get the grip, and then I just throw it. And so uh, if it moves down or if it moves like a two seam, you know, as long as it's moving, I'm not, I'm not going to complain about it much. You guys, I know, had so much success here last year getting to the Super Regionals. Were you surprised to get back to Clemson again? 
Uh, we all talked about it. I mean, we didn't see our name in the first couple of regionals, and we're like, what if we go back to Clemson? And, uh, you know, it showed up against St. John's, and it was kind of deja vu. Uh, I know the older guys at Kyle Wright and Colin Snyder and Matt Rubenthal and all them, they texted us and was just like, you guys are going back there? And we said, yeah, let's, let's do it again. <laughs> well, you seem to be comfortable here. The mood around the club, you guys, we, we showed the, the clip from Coach Corbin, the press conference after the – loss in Hoover where he he's just kind of said you guys are ready for a new environment and do something different it seems like the the club was ready for that as well yeah I mean what did they have like 10 11 SEC teams um, to continue on in the regional so it just tells you how hard the uh, conference is and it's nice to get out of it and play some new faces and and kind of get a, a new start you know everyone comes into the regional zero zero so I think it was good for us and, and good for the other teams to come in and and kind of just refresh and, and start new. Meredith out looking on strikes as Hickman gets him for the first out of the inning. Davidson takes a ball outside. Well, Chandler, a lot of people are pulling for you. Amazing what you've written about all that you and your teammates have been through. And best of luck the rest of the way in this postseason, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, Chandler Day joining us here as it's a 2-2 count now on Logan Davidson and as you said Hickman's been in total control tonight oh yeah he just manipulating the baseball working to both sides of the plate with the heater and you know just seems to be very comfortable in this big moment as we have seen at the big league level you were talking about your days in Houston earlier about if you guys got to the seventh inning, you knew it was game over with those horses you had down there anchored by Brad Lidge. Yankees, Red Sox these days are that same way as Hickman loses Davidson for a one-out walk. But Bandy's kind of turned into that at the collegiate level. If they have a lead after six, it's Gillis, Schaller, Day, and it's good night. Yeah, I mean, that's how it feels. That, that's how it feels. They you know, maybe haven't quite done it long enough yet to just – put it put it in the bank but it, it feels like that's the way it's going and so you think about that here we are in the bottom of the fourth you know really all Hickman has to do is get them probably two more innings and then you hand the ball to the to the mules in the back end of this bullpen it becomes very difficult for the opponent Seth Beer is the best power hitter in Clemson history is three less home runs then the leaders, Baker and D'Alessio, all time. But nobody's had this kind of performance through three seasons, hitting more than 16 homers all years he's been at Clemson. Three-time All-American. Might hear his name called tomorrow night in the first round. Strike one. Keith Law has him going to the Red Sox with the 26th pick. Yeah, you, you just look at the consistency of production that he's had over three years here. Came, showed up immediately, was hitting in the middle of their order, has had a bullseye on his back from the day he walked onto campus and has done nothing but just produce at a very high level. Right on the bag, turn around, oh. flip the second, and he's safe. Infante one hopped it there to Kaiser who almost got Davidson on the tag. Yeah, Infante looked like he was a little slow on the transition. Infante, or Kaiser does a great job digging that ball out just a little late with the tag. Well, I tell you, great call right there by John Haggerty at second base. Infante just bobbles it just a touch. And Kaiser knew it. He didn't. He didn't fight it one bit. He knew he just was a little late with it, but nice job of making that play close on the back end. Now Chris Williams. That's down the line foul. Williams earlier today was one for four with two runs batted in.
Uh -oh. That is hit a ton, but did he get underneath it? DeMarco at the wall, it's gone. That's what the Tigers need. They need their dudes in the middle of the order to play like it. Chris Williams, the reigning National Player of the Week, hit three home runs last week at the ACC tournament. Gets a gutter ball right down Broadway and blasts it into left field seats. Pat DeMarco got a bad read on this ball. That ball sails into the five or so rows deep into the seats. And a double play that was not turned by the Vanderbilt defense leads to a two-run homer. 18th home run for Williams this season. Maybe the spark the Tigers need in the bottom of the fourth. Boy, it's a game of inches. And Fonte just bobbles that ball just a touch, and then the throw bounces. Kaiser can't just can't get the glove there. And next thing you know, Tigers strike for a two spot. Wilkie off the end of the bat. Paul with an easy play, and the side is retired. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One in Clemson, South Carolina. Vanderbilt leading the Tigers 5-2 as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Kaiser, Clark, and DeMarco do up against Chris Williams in Clemson. Kaiser hit a three-run shot the first time he came to the plate. Second time, rather, he came to the last time. Three-run bomb. It's a one-nothing game at that point. He swings through that one. You know, you look at the frame, and it's very similar to Logan Davidson, except carries a little more weight. But he never hit for the power that you've seen from Davidson. But all of a sudden, it looks like it's starting to develop. He's swinging the bat with an authority that we have not seen from him in his time at Vanderbilt become a real offensive threat. Here is his home run two innings ago. A hanging slider from Spencer Strider, and that's a little front zone Johnson right there, Taylor. Way up over the concourse in left center field. Who coined that phrase again? That's, well, I, it was like an Angels thing way back in the day, but I learned it from my buddy Orlando Palmero, who played on that Angels World Series team. Everything was a Johnson. Everything, every home run was a Johnson. I have no idea why. Well, that one certainly qualified. Kaiser. Clark behind him, who also homered, and DeMarco do up. 0-2 pitch from Griffith, and he wants that one back. Staying alive. Yeah, that's a nice job right there. Extend the barrel. Sometimes you got to be, you got to hit ugly. Way out in front of a breaking ball. Just did a nice job of getting enough of it. Staying alive, as you said. Try to try to wait him out, fight him off until you find one that you like. A fist pump on the first out. Look at what's going on across these 16 regional sites. Four national seeds are facing elimination today. Florida State and Coastal Carolina are already out. Keegan McGovern helping the dogs to the regional final. Had a big homer today. Wolfpack beat Army. They have to beat Auburn twice to move on tonight and then again tomorrow. And the Aggies are done. Hoosiers send the first SEC team packing. SEC still with a... Remarkable record, 18 and four now in the NCAA tournament. As Philip Clark takes strike one.
Here's the tote board. That's crazy. 18 and four. Still have nine teams alive for the Super Regionals. And they got under that one. Wharton goes back, up the hill, gone. To back at bats for Clark out of the yard. You think this kid's talented? How about a backside homer followed by one to dead central? A homer at about 35 degrees launch that at, at first you're thinking, can a ball with that launch get out to dead center field? And it flew out of here. Ends up being a no doubter. This ball is a hanging breaking ball. That he catches on the sweet spot. You can tell he wasn't quite sure about it at first either, but it ends up sailing over the seats just right of center field. Just a hang and break. I love how he gathers at the top of his load. That's when he's reading the pitch, catches that breaking ball out front, and blast off. And we're seeing, you can tell by the outfielder's reactions. That's, that's DeMarco in left and Wharton in center. Both guys that kind of ran almost in and over at first and end up going straight back as the balls are sailing over their heads. That's just how well the ball is carrying tonight. I mean, Wharton didn't think that ball was out at first either, and it hit the back railing over the center field seats. You know, the catchers usually have to do so much extra work, and you wonder – about the amount of time they can commit to their hitting. Bandy's got two catchers in the lineup every night. They move Steven Scott up in the lineup because of how successful he's been at the plate. He's already homered tonight. And Philip Clark, when he's not catching, is the designated hitter. He's got two bombs. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see where Philip Clark ends up from a position standpoint. He certainly can catch, but the bat plays. There's no question about that. Pat DeMarco 0 for 2, and now in a 1-2 count with Owen Griffith. Chased a bad one. And the throw down to first, second out of the inning. Griffith has struck out both. Guys, he's retired in this inning. I tell you what, that's a real curveball. I mean, the stuff has been very good. Made the mistake to Clark on a breaking ball, but when he throws that put-away hammer, Vandy's not getting a real good look at it. Paul walked in the third. Started every game for Tim Corbin this season. And that's a base hit. Especially known for his defensive play, Vandy is on pace to break the record for fielding percentage by a Commodore team this season at over 975, in large part to Paul's defense, but he's got something to say at the plate, too. Infante, who is 0 for 7 with two walks in this regional, and as you said, struggling at the plate in 2018. But Tim Corbin continues to go back to this guy. Yeah, just trust him. Just loves the way he handles himself. And this is really just the, the one piece that is missing right now for this team to be clicking on all cylinders. They get Julian Infante going again. This is a hitter that led the team in hits and RBI. So it wasn't like, oh, he hit 100 home runs but punched out a 1,000 times. And I mean, he was extremely consistent on a team that had a first-rounder in Jaron Kendall and, a, and another high pick in Will Toffey. He led the team in hits and RBIs. And it just hadn't, it just hadn't happened this year. You know, he was in the college home run derby last year that I called and, you know, seemed to be set up to just have a monstrous year. 
and it, it has never come together for him. But Tim Corbin can't say enough good things about this young man's character. Runner goes, and Wilkie will have no play. So Paul's down at second. Those numbers that just flashed on the screen for Paul. 17 for 18 and stolen bases. Now just four behind Austin Martin for the team lead. Coach Corbin said that some of Martin's teammates are jealous of Austin's speed, and they've been showing off this year. Well, they're stealing bases at a very high rate. Nearly 100 on the season. Strike three. Well, Griffith strikes out the side, but he gives up another dinger. Philip Clark out of the yard again. Another star freshman for Vanderbilt putting his stamp on a ball game. Tigers have been regional hosts each of the last three years. Lost to Oklahoma State here in 2016. Lost in a seven-game series, I guess you could call it. It went the distance last year, and they lost to Vanderbilt in that winner-take-all game on a Monday night, 8 nothing. They're facing elimination tonight, down 6-2. to two. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning with Wharton, Bird, and Green due up. Throughout the weekend, Berkey, you have felt, it, or you have sensed, I guess, that this Clemson team is feeling that pressure. I think it's hard not to. You know, especially when you, when you have a the same club back in your own building for a repeat of the previous year's regional is a program that's just been wildly successful in the regular season. It's one thing to, to have not made it to Omaha in that time, but to not have gotten out of your own regional with a fan base that cares as much as this fan base does and a program that has as much history as they do, it's, it's impossible not to feel the pressure. I thought they were tight early on against Moorhead State. They were able to overcome it. And early on last night against Vanderbilt, you thought, wow, this is a team ready to steamroll. Vanderbilt responded, and, you know, here they are. I don't think they've, they've played tight since early in that Moorhead game, but how could you not feel the weight of three straight regional hosts and, and yet to get out of it? Base hit for Wharton to lead things off in the fifth. That brings Grayson Bird to the plate, a power hitting third baseman trying to get something going off of Hickman in the fifth. Got to him in the fourth, scoring twice. Also call this the Seth Beer era. These are yeah, three that's right. years. That's right. And with one of, if not the best power hitters in program history, you'd love to see him get a chance in Omaha. That's it to the opposite field, and the first two guys are on base in the fifth. Come the Tigers, the home crowd loving it. They're coming to their feet. Couple well hit balls. Grayson Bird has hit it on the screws twice tonight. And this this home crowd is as educated of a fan base as I have seen. They know what's in that Vanderbilt bullpen, and they know they need a rally right now. ever heard the football team run down the hill pet Howard's Rock you've heard that so many times Jordan Green's got plenty of friends on the football team Cleveland Farrell their great defensive end at the top of the list and he has a flair for the dramatic two walk-off hits this season inside ball one now what should Green's approach be here well, down four runs at this point in the ball game, I, I think they're just going to let him hit. It, it was a closer game. You'd probably be looking to move the baseball, maybe even bunt for a hit or 
or sack, but you know, right here, you're trying to keep the pressure on and come up with a big swing of the bat. It looks as though Green has maybe overswung some in this regional. See Maddox Conger getting loose down in that Vanderbilt bullpen, another one of the power arms that they have down there. They're going to slow this game down a little bit. Now, Scott Brown last night had something really funny to say and must oh, be doing man. it again. I forgot to ask him. I forgot to ask him. I mean, you were supposed to remind me of that. I like that a lot. I mean, he's not even up to the mound yet, and Hickman's laughing. Just lighten the mood. No, there's no doubt about it. And usually these, these meetings from a pitching coach perspective, you're trying to gauge the young man's temperament. Is he starting to stress out a little bit, or does he still believe in his stuff? And obviously just a freshman, and this is a pretty big moment. Hitters count for Green here with two on and nobody out. Doug Kingsmore Stadium trying to come to life here in the fifth inning. That's what I'm talking about. Just some swings that just look like he, you know, it's not a I'm trying to move the ball and drive it in the middle of the field. It really looks like he's trying to create lift and generate a little something extra, and he just keeps getting just underneath the baseball. We've seen a ton of foul balls from him. Looks like his left shoulder is really bothering him. That might be affecting the situation some too, but keeps messing with that left shoulder. You can see he's not real comfortable. See if Hickman stays with that fastball at the top of the zone. This swing, full count. It's Rob Jolly on deck. Shoulder just doesn't feel good. Another fastball towards the top of the zone. That barrel just a little below plane. And the grimace afterwards. He is just not comfortable. It says good vibe tribe on that sleeve that he has worn today. Always has something colorful written there. Trying to think good thoughts here on a full count. With two on and nobody out in the fifth. Got it. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, LHN, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Green did look like he was bothered by his hamstring on a close play earlier today against St. John's. That's the first time we've seen him see to, seem to be aggravated by his shoulder. And it's ball one to Jolly. Jolly's a spot starter. We've 
we've seen a plethora of left fielders for Clemson in this series. Strike one. Hickman just leaning on that fastball right now. Continues to do a good job of getting it to the outside edge of the plate. These are high stress pitches right here, especially with how small the ballpark is playing. Any mistake could be launched. One and two. Sam Hall started a few games in this series in left field. Kier Meredith has come in to play that position, but it's Jolly tonight facing Hickman, who's about to throw his 69th pitch in the fifth inning. Four strikeouts for the freshman. Two on and one out in the fifth. Field base hit. They will put the brakes on Wharton and the bases are loaded. Wharton on third, Bird on second. And Jolly on first. And Key Air Meredith is coming to the plate as the game tying run with Vanderbilt working in the bullpen. I tell you, you got left, switch hit left, the next three hitters. Vanderbilt's got a righty up in the bullpen, though. This You, you would think this is would be a time where maybe they'd go left-handed, but it's either Hickman or Conger, both righties. Strike one. Oh! Meredith made his last start on April 24th, last time he played until he pinch hit last night in this game. And he started both games today in the regionals. Had shoulder and oblique trouble this season. Foul ball, 0 and 2. Big spot. You got freshman on freshman. The freshman, Meredith. As you said, just hadn't played a ton. And here he is, boom, right in these big moments. Got the bases loaded. Your team down four runs, trying to stay alive in an elimination game. And you find yourself right in the middle of all of it. Ball one. And that'll bring in a run. Mason Hickman and Coach Corbin want to know why Meredith was given first base when last night the same thing happened to Ethan Paul and he was not awarded first base. And, and I, the only thing I can say the difference is one's a curveball and one's a fastball. To me, the fastball, obviously, even much more difficult to get out of the way of than the breaking ball. And, yeah, the arm's out over the plate, but I don't think he made a move into the baseball. You tell me what you think, Taylor, but I don't – he certainly didn't make a move to get out of the way, but he didn't make a move into the ball. 
I think the key point is what you just said. That's a fastball. He's not trying to move into the ball. I think David Yule made the right call. And really, it just boils down to the, the risk of that pitch call against a, a hitter like Meredith who's hanging that elbow out over the plate. And really, ex pretty well executed pitch because it was pretty close to strike zone. Meredith's elbow's way out over the hitting area, but a big break for Clemson. And now here they come. They're two power bats back to back. Actually, three in a row. Logan Davidson, one of the best power hitters in the game. Davidson became the first Clemson Tiger did a home run from both sides of the plate in the same game against Pitt this year. Then he did it again in the same inning against Notre Dame in the ACC tournament. Big pitch by Hickman. He's had command of all three of them. We've seen him be able to pitch with all three pitches to both sides of the plate. But there's so many strikes. You get hitters in swing mode. And again, on a night where the ballpark's playing small, he's got to really be fine with his command here. Just missed. That is Bird at third. Jolly at second, Meredith at first. 2-1 to Davidson. Great breaking pitch from Hickman. To me, you either go climb the ladder with the heater or go back to that breaking ball. Gonna throw the breaking ball. Make sure you get it down and out of the zone. Got it. Base is still loaded with two outs for Seth Beer, who's gone deep twice in these regionals. This is a young man that can launch anything at any time. He especially likes the breaking ball. A couple of left on left breaking balls that he's hit. He's hit for both his home runs in this regional. And he is on the breaking ball, especially late in the count. So Vanderbilt knows that. They know you got to pitch him in to have success. Beer saw them pitch him in last night. Let's see who makes the adjustment here. Fouls the first pitch off. Nobody's hit more home runs in three years as a Clemson Tiger, and no college baseball player has more home runs currently in the game than he does. 56 since January of 2016. Fastball away, fastball in. Probably a change up at some point in here. Again, if you're going to go soft, you really have to keep it out of the strike zone. That's hit in the air to center field. Austin Martin drifts over a bit, and Hickman gets out of it. Vanderbilt leads 6-3, to three, heading to the 6. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One in Clemson, South Carolina. Vanderbilt's trying to make their 7th Super Regional in the last nine years. 
while Clemson tries to force a game seven tomorrow. Mandy's trying to do that with one of the youngest teams in college baseball. A bunch of guys that have not been in this position before, including Mason Hickman, who just got out of a massive jam in the fifth inning. Keep in mind, Hickman was pitching for Pope John Paul II High School at this time last year. Was that impressive? I mean, in this environment with what was on the line, pitch after pitch, even the even the pitch he hit Meredith with, with you could argue was, was maybe a strike. And again, the, the book on Hickman is elite command, and he showed us elite poise right there, handling himself very well in a hostile environment. Seth Beer had his chance and just got under it, popping it out to center field. Winner moves on to the Supers. Clemson wins this regional, and they are assured of hosting next weekend because Florida State lost in Tallahassee. Oklahoma and Mississippi State down there playing with the Sooners in the driver's seat. That game, I think, is just underway. Harrison Ray will now pinch hit for Jason Gonzalez to start things off in the top of the six, followed by Austin Martin and Steven Scott. How about Auburn off this 6 nothing start? Yeah, we keep watching these scores in the top right corner. Texas Tech up five, Zip and Lubbock in the bottom of the second. Griffith still out there in relief of Spencer Strider, who did not make it through the third inning. In the first game of the day, Clemson's Jacob Hennessy wasn't able to make it out of the third. Ryan Miller came in and pitched five and two thirds. Not only kept Clemson in the game, but allowed them to get the lead. Yeah. Griffith trying to do the same thing tonight. They've had some nice outings out of the bullpen. There's no doubt about it. I think the piece that that Clemson's missing that really has kind of been an issue all year. They just they don't have dudes to lean on to get them deeper into the ball game in the rotation. Miller was outstanding, gave up some hits, but really did a nice job of bridging the gap to Gilliam, who made it interesting at the end, but Miller was the pitching MVP of game one today. Ray played a little bit in this regional last year, went one for six with two runs and an RBI. Sophomore from Longwood, Florida, and a full count here. Leadoff man aboard for the doors in the sixth, the head of Austin Martin, who's one for three. And here we go. Back to the top of the order. Haven't had a ton from Bladey, but I'll tell you, one through five has been pretty dangerous in this ball game. Crushing Oklahoma State in the third inning, 8 nothing. That gets away, and Ray gets a free bag. The catchers today for St. John's and Clemson have had all kinds of issues. Yeah, we've seen a lot of balls scoot away, and we know Kyle Wilkie's been back there a while. You see him drop that left knee and then expose the, the heel of the glove to the ball. That's... Not the best way to keep it in front. It looks like Monty Lee's going to make a change as Vanderbilt's got another runner in scoring position. Coach Lee to the mound in a 6-3 game in the top of the sixth inning. And back to the bullpen, the Tigers go down three runs. 
last year. Flashback, same two teams. Vandy whipped Clemson to advance to the Super Regionals, winning 8-0 on Monday night. Will Toffee with two homers, drove in five. Vandy pitching staff combined for a four-hit shutout to get to the Super Regionals once again. Didn't have a lot of luck in Corvallis once they got there. No, that Oregon State team. I know they didn't win at all, but that's that's one of the all-time great teams. This is Alex Schnell, a senior from Milton, Georgia, in to try to keep it at a three-run game. He now has Ray on second base, Austin Martin at the plate, and a 1-0 count. Ball two. ACC has had a rough tournament so far with the exception of the team in the right corner that just scrolled through. North Carolina has been solid and they're ahead in the regional final in Chapel Hill while over in Raleigh, the Wolfpack are down big to Auburn. hit back through the box it's 7-3 Vanderbilt and Austin Martin is on second base that ball was smoked Schnell behind in the count challenges Martin and a fastball right down Broadway Broadway is rifled into left center field how short that path to the ball is this is a kid that shows you a really good feel for the barrel. A rocket in the left center field gap, and now the dangerous Steven Scott struts to the plate. That's for sure. Hit it out of the yard in the first inning, walked and scored in the third. Whistler's feeling the flow right now. I mean, yeah, he's got he a little extra, little extra juice in his in his whistle right now. I, I, it is extra special loud. I don't think he was doing much whistling when this team was 25 and 22 on May the sixth. They were 11 and 13 in the SEC at that time. And you just can't stress enough Coach Corbin's ability to connect with his team and get their very best. That gets away, and Martin's down to third after the four-pitch walk to Scott. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, I, I did a pro, I did a projection before that weekend, and they asked me, okay, who do you think's in the tournament? I I, I didn't have Andy in. I, I did. I thought they were going to lose two out of three to to Tennessee that weekend, and I thought they were going to lose two out of three at home to Kentucky, and I, I just didn't see it. I didn't think they'd have enough wins. I didn't think the conference record would be good enough. And they go on the road and win that series of Tennessee, come home, sweep Kentucky, and here we are. They were outscored 29-6 to in Auburn. 29-6. And ever since, they have been a brand-new team. And they are a few innings away from going back to the Super Regionals again unless Clemson can mount the comeback. Another pitching change in Tigertown. The SEC's Vanderbilt Commodores are up 7-3. Here in Clemson, and the entire conference has been putting on a clinic all season, extending into the regionals where they are 18 and four, still nine teams in action. Mississippi State, 
Comes back to beat Samford today, 9-8. to eight. They'll play Oklahoma. They are playing Oklahoma in the regional final and lead early in that game. LSU rallies back for five in the ninth to beat a state rival, Northwestern State, and they did it in Oregon, of all places. So LSU and the Beavers going at it tonight. J.J. Blade takes ball one from Travis Marr, the new Clemson pitcher. Runners at the corners for Vandy with nobody out and already one in. It was six to three in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Clemson had the bases loaded with Logan Davidson and Seth Beer coming to the plate with only one out. Davidson struck out, Beer flied out. And Vandy matched them with a run here in the top of the six and are threatening to do a lot more damage now. Yeah, and Blade really hadn't gotten going yet. And right here in a 2-0 count. You're in trouble. You got Blade, Kaiser, and Clark. And you really don't have a lot of margin for error. All these guys swinging it with a lot of confidence. Strike one. And now the bases are loaded for Connor Kaiser. Going back to what you were saying before this last pitching change, you did not have Vanderbilt in your field after that May 6 loss to Auburn when they were 25 and 22 on the season, 11 and 13 in the SEC. They lost to Tennessee Tech two nights later in Nashville to fall to 25 and 23. But then won the first two games in Knoxville, beat Middle Tennessee in the middle of the week, and then the season-changing weekend was their performance on the West End sweeping the Kentucky Wildcats. And now it's Kaiser at the plate with the bases loaded and nobody out. Boy, Mar needs that pitch. It's tough enough to get through this hot bandy lineup. If you're not getting the edge and you got to go middle, this could turn into a crooked number quickly. Yeah, it just, man, it was obviously Vanderbilt always has talent. It, you know, you, you don't have to search real hard to find guys that, that look good in a uniform and, and have a lot of the requisite skills associated with being successful in the Southeastern Conference. But they just had never put it together for any long period of time. That's it on the button. Down the right field line. Grand slam, Connor Kaiser. Seven ribeyes. A three run shot in the third and a grand slam in the sixth. And Connor Kaiser might have just put his stamp on the regional MVP right there. He had just, he had a bullet foul the pitch before, and this one, he gets the barrel just a touch further out in front. And again, on a night where the ballpark's playing pretty small, he shoots it out just over the right field wall. And 
man, this Vanderbilt offense right now, I mean, just 53 home runs on the season coming into the ball game. It wasn't, this was not a, a team known for their power. But you wouldn't know it by watching them play tonight. Five home runs in this game. Philip Clark at the plate has two of those five home runs, 3-0 pitch, and he draws a four-pitch walk. The rails have fallen off for Clemson here in the sixth inning. Just think, 15 minutes ago, Seth Beers at yeah. the plate yeah. as the go-ahead run. Now you're down eight. Now you're down eight, and, and you still got a lot of outs to cover in this ballgame. And a bullpen that has been taxed to the limit. Pat DeMarco is 0 for 3 tonight with two strikeouts. Pops this one up. Jolly comes in. And after five Vanderbilt Commodores have already scored and the first six reached, Clemson gets their first out. Ryan Huggins warming up. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you're the home team. You, you still got two here in this inning. And nine more after it so 11 outs still need to be recorded and you're gonna have to find somebody that can keep them right there and give your offense a chance to creep back in the ball game hey last night ethan paul he was also hit by a pitch was not rewarded first base and two pitches later he hits a two-run home run and at that time Vanderbilt trailed 3-1 yeah. in that game. It was a game-tying home run. And imagine if he was awarded first base. Very similar to the play that happened with Kier Meredith earlier. Now, granted, what we talked about, one was a curveball, one was a fastball, but that was a big call. Vanderbilt has scored 14 runs since then. They are playing with some serious swagger right now. It's just why it's so hard to figure out what's going to happen in the month of June. Yeah. You, you have this three-month sample size, right? And you think, okay, Florida's the best team in college baseball. Ole Miss is great. Stetson, my goodness, what a year they're having. And it's continuing in land, by the way. Oregon State and Stanford, Texas Tech, the class of their conferences. Clemson was such a great year in the ACC. You have to erase those records, and those thoughts really to some degree come June. Yeah, you just don't know. We see it in basketball. I mean, Virginia, who, who saw them <laughs> losing first round of the NCAA tournament? So you just never know. You get in these regional formats, and momentum can, can completely shift. It is the seventh base runner of this inning for Vanderbilt. Clark goes down to second with Paul's second hit of the night. Pat DeMarco is the only Commodore that has not been on base tonight. And he was the only out recorded in this inning so far. And Fonte is 0 for 1, but he's drawn two walks. Yeah, it, it's been a team effort. The middle part of the order has done most of the heavy lifting, but the entire lineup looking pretty confident. Oh, 
and two. If Andy holds on and wins this game, again, it'll be interesting to see what happens in Tallahassee between Mississippi State and Oklahoma. The Bulldogs have to beat the Sooners twice as Oklahoma has not lost down there yet. I would imagine that if Oklahoma wins that regional, Vanderbilt yeah, would host. I would think so. Next weekend in Nashville. But if Mississippi State wins, I would think a committee would decide mm -hmm. who the better team is. I, and I don't know exactly what goes into that bid process. I know Duty Noble is still under construction. And they played their home schedule there, but there's still a lot of construction going on down there. It's going to be beautiful. Oh. You're right. I've made many trips to Starkville this year for – football and basketball and when that thing is totally complete and all the tractors and bulldozers yeah. are out of there john cohen has coined it the carnegie hall of college baseball it looks like it not sure that fits starkville but <laughs> that's what he's going with and for oklahoma Kyler Murray's got a big decision to make potentially yep. in the next 48 hours depending on where he's drafted and the kind of signing bonus he might command. Will that mean he plays professional baseball or will he be the quarterback of the Sooners next season? <laughs> strike three. Infante down on strikes again. As Vanderbilt has batted around, Harrison Ray was a pinch hitter for Jason Gonzalez to start this inning, and he walked and ended up scoring. This is where it all began. What an inning it has been for Vanderbilt. Just absorbed the the runs that Clemson put on the board and, and answer in a big way. Mason Hickman's ability to execute some pitches and get them off the field. And then right back at it, the offense throws another punch. Mar is now throwing strikes and ahead 0-2. Strider started for Clemson. Griffith and Schnell have pitched tonight. And now this is Travis Marr trying to end the sixth inning, which has been a house of horrors for the home team. And if you're a Clemson fan, you're just, you're hanging with them. You're, you're hanging your hat on the fact you got an offense that can strike quickly, but it's going to be a daunting task against this Vanderbilt bullpen. Well, that was late. Mm. Could this be Seth Beers last night as a Clemson Tiger? Strike three called, and the inning ends, but not before Vanderbilt scores five times. The biggest blow was the Kiner, Connor Kaiser grand slam. Vandy has broken it wide open in Clemson. Well, it feels pretty comfortable at 11 to three right now, but it was anything but that last inning. Mason Hickman in a really tough spot against two of the country's best hitters, Logan Davidson and Seth Beer. He punches out Davidson, gets Beer, to fly out to center. The lead was intact. The offense responded, and Hickman showed you the poise of a veteran to get off the field. 
it was six to three in a game that could have gone sideways in a second. Mm -hmm. Instead, Vandy breaks it wide open, and Chris Williams fouls the first pitch of the sixth back. Williams did Omer his last time up. of this game, if Andy can get through it, you wonder how much longer Hickman goes and what they use to finish things off. Trying to qualify for the Super Regionals once again. They have made six Supers in the last eight years. This will be their seventh trip in, in nine years, the Super Regionals. The longest streak in the SEC of consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. That's at 13. Corbin era has been a sight to behold. 3-2 pitch. And Hickman loses Williams to start the sixth. What's this guy's magic? Well, I think he's created a culture of winning. There's, there's no doubt about it. It's a destination place for the, the best recruits in America. He has a lot to sell. It's an incredible university in one of the best cities in America that plays in one of the best baseball conferences in America. So there's a lot to sell. But he's just a charismatic dude that guys love to play for. They've built a culture where the, the alumni comes back. And obviously that is celebrated. You see guys like David Price coming back all the time and, and going to Omaha to see him. So there's this family atmosphere that he's created there that has established them as, as one of the elites in college baseball. And obviously they've got it done on the field. I mean, seven or nine Supers, they went to back-to-back -back College World Series finals and won a national championship. And there's just, boy, there's just a lot to this program. It's a program that has a lot of depth to it. Hit sharply, but foul by Wilkie, two and one. He's had an outstanding regional. Catcher for Clemson. Got the big hat, big hit in game one today. Everybody was waiting around for somebody to make a play, and he was the one that did it. That's hit to left field. Going back is to Marco. 11-5. You can't have enough in this one, Taylor. Just the ballpark is playing very, very small. Wilkie hit this ball well, but launched it way up in the air. Just weren't sure, was it going to have enough? DeMarco looked like he was going to make a play on it. Chooses to jump. I tell you, if he'd have climbed up there and grabbed the rail, he might have been able to hang in the air and make that play. But it sneaks out of here. and I think that'll be it for Hickman. He goes five innings tonight. Gives up two runs here to start the sixth. As Vanderbilt has built a six-run lead, their bullpen has been terrific in this regional. We'll see if that remains the same tonight. We have had a shootout in the upstate of South Carolina tonight. Vanderbilt with nine hits and five home runs. Clemson's used the long ball to try to get back into this one, down 11-5 as we play in the bottom of the sixth inning. Kyle Wilkie with the latest home run, chasing starter Mason Hickman out of the game. 
who is replaced by Maddox Conger. Right-hander from Stephenville, Texas. Yeah, another one of these big arms for Vanderbilt out of the bullpen. You'll see a fastball in the low 90s. His pitch well for Vanderbilt this year. 20 punch outs in 19 and a third. Last appearance came 12 days ago against Texas A&M. Has pitched in the postseason for Coach Corbin in each of the last two years. This is Drew Wharton, who singled and scored his last time up. Ball one. Two runs already in off of Hickman. Wharton, Bird, and Green now do up here in the sixth. Strike one. Yeah, and if you're if you're Conger right here, you, you, you come in with the mentality of challenging in the strike zone. Limit the free passes, make them earn everything they get. Hard to think they're going to solo home run their way back to the ball game, right? So even if you give up a couple long balls on a night where the ball is jumping, you can live with it so long as you haven't given them base runners in advance. This was the trouble spot in the lineup for Hickman in the last inning. As that is popped up, and Fonte will run out of room, full count. Wharton singled, Bird did too. And after a green strikeout, Jolly singled. I mean, the bases were loaded when they went back to the top of the order after Meredith was hit by a pitch. Got him, strike three. Nobody wearing purple and orange like this call. A fastball at the bottom looked like it was a touchdown. And Drew Wharton doesn't like it. Monty Lee definitely didn't like it. Bird takes ball one. Those are the kinds of calls if you're if you're Clemson, you need to get back in this ball game. Those 50-50 calls, especially in a full count. I think part of the frustration that Clemson fans have is what's been happening here the last couple of years, not just this weekend. Oh, there's no doubt. There's a there's a cumulative effect to everything. But, you know, one thing we've noticed is, is this fan base is they are fully engaged in each pitch. Not an easy place to call balls and strikes. They're holding you accountable on pretty much every pitch. And if you make a call, especially a strikeout call, that they don't like, you're going to hear about it. What was the most passionate, rowdiest place you played in college? Mississippi State. Like this, where all the yeah. fans are into in. every pitch. No doubt about it. That's it, sharply base hit. Grayson Bird having himself a heck of a ball game. That's three bullets he's hit tonight. Jordan Green will come to the plate with one gone in the six. Tigers have scored twice. He struck out his last time up. And it looks like he was favoring the left side of his upper body. Yeah, it looked like he's dealing with some left shoulder discomfort for sure.
very late on that one. And I don't, I don't see any reason why Vandy wouldn't keep staying with fastballs against Green. He's had a hard time getting to that one, especially one that's at the top of the zone. Nice take right there. That's the one he's been struggling with. Old missing a dog fight tonight against Tennessee mm. Tech. Five to five in the top of the eighth. That's a 1-0 game. Yeah, that's they're a day behind in that regional due to weather. Duke Blue Devils. And they've had nine lives in that Athens regional. They are scoring some runs. That too, an elimination game. The Gamecocks are in control in Greenville, North Carolina, as East Carolina and UNCW play tonight. Tar Heels, the one team that's been firing on all cylinders, and Green, they do call a strikeout while Bird goes down to second base. Slider in the dirt here. Let's, let's watch the barrel of green. Looked like it went forward. There wasn't much intent, but it looked like that barrel snapped. And first base umpire Steve Mattingly said the barrel just went too far. Jolly singled his last time up. Trying to make this a five-run game here. It's this one slowly to Infante, flips to Conger, and the side is retired. Clemson scores twice in the six, but trail by six. Vandy 11, Clemson five, top of the seventh inning. Commodores three innings away from another super regional berth. They're seventh in the last nine years. Clemson needs to mount a miraculous comeback to force a game tomorrow. Top of the Vandy order due here with Martin, Scott, and Blade. And each of these guys have been all over the base paths tonight. Martin twice, Scott three times, and Blade once twice as well. Two and two. Well, if there is a comeback to be had, it starts right here. It starts with getting off the field against the top part of this order without giving up any more damage. If you can start to post some zeros, you get a chance to chip away. The, the question is, can they slow down the top half of this Vanderbilt order that just seems to be red hot? Vandy's drawn nine walks tonight. Nine walks and five homers. That's a good recipe for a big number on the scoreboard. Strike three. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. 9 walks, 9 strikeouts, 5 home runs. It's been swing and miss, take your base, yeah. or run around them. Very new era. Whether it's college baseball or major league baseball, that's that's a trend we're seeing at both levels. This guy Steven Scott is walked twice and homered once. Ole Miss takes the lead, headed to the bottom of the eighth, up six to five. Rebels trying to get to the regional final. Then the East Carolina UNCW winner plays South Carolina tomorrow. Washington, that's your squad that you picked to come out of there. 
And they're in the driver's seat playing UConn tied at six. Again, the heels, that's kind of the pride of the ACC right now. They win that game, and they are in the Super Regionals. Wolfpack in trouble in the fourth. Auburn a win away from the Supers. The Mad Hatters, as they call him down there, and Stetson having the best season in school history ever. Yeah, it's it's been impressive to see. And for them to carry it over, it's not just about their ace, Logan Gilbert. They got a nice team. Uh-oh. That's hit. Uh-oh. Going back is Wharton, and that is gone. Steven Scott with Vanderbilt's sixth home run of the night, and they've doubled up Clemson. Wow. That dude right there. He is launching them at an alarming rate right now. And that was a rocket off the batter's eye. A no doubter from the second he impacted it. And that will be Travis Marr's last pitch of the game. Steven Scott with a couple of homers. Philip Clark with a couple tonight. But this was quite possibly the biggest shot of the night. Commodore is playing some long ball, folks. Putting on a show. Steven Scott's second home run of the game. A laser off the batter's eye to center field. All Commodores right now. How about this? Tying the record ever in Vanderbilt history when they did it to Valpo. I was young then, 1991. That was my prime, man. <laughs> J.J. Blade now facing the new Clemson pitcher, Ryan Huggins. If 91 was your prime. You peaked early. I did. Okay. In all parts of my life. Freshman from Newberry, South Carolina. Shout out to the Lord of Graphics, Aaron Ortega, for finding that. That's 27 years between the last time Vandy did this. Well, we have to give Jeremy Mills our Lord of Research credit, too. It's a collaborative effort. Collaborative effort. Okay, we like that. We like team efforts. Vanderbilt's got a nice team effort going on tonight. Vanderbilt may just has to go on the road the way they're playing this weekend. Chop. This might be a tough play, and Huggins can't make it in time. Big guy legs it out. Give him an infield hit. And I, I know it feels very comfortable, but keep adding on. Clemson still has nine outs, just a seven-run game. And I know Vanderbilt bullpen, all those things, but it is an offensive night. And if you're Vanderbilt, don't let up. Well, you know this guy isn't going to do that. He's got seven RBI in the game with two home runs. Yeah, I would say this is your regional MVP at the moment. This might be the third shot of the night. Warden goes back to the track, to the wall, gone. Nine RBI. A grand slam, a three-run shot, and now a two-run shot for Kaiser. He has now put himself into postseason, NCAA postseason lore. I mean, this is one of the great, this has turned into one of the great performances of all time. Three home runs and nine RBI. He got a chance to hit the home run cycle, folks. A fastball up in the zone. Kaiser 
catches all of it again and again, on a night where the baseball is traveling. That one flies over the center field wall. A two run, a three run, and a grand slam all in one game. You are witnessing the greatest single game home run performance in Vanderbilt baseball history. Well, it's got it's got to rank up there all, all time in, in NCAA tournament history. Uh, Clark grounds out to Williams, two down. I mean, I, I'm sure there's been somebody sometime that that maybe bettered it, but three and nine. And that, that ties school records and might be even bigger than that. Look at him. So, I mean, he came into the ball game with three, brother. He came into the ball game with three. I want to know if he hits a solo shot his next time up, if anyone's ever hit the uh, – Home the, run cycle. Yeah, home run cycle. Well, I, I'd say it's hard to hit for the home run cycle because at some point people stop giving you a chance. But he's going to get in that bat. Now, if Ortega and Jeremy find that, now yeah, we're, they, we're, they get into a new level of Lords. Jeremy's got a lot of work to do, and <laughs> we are adding to his stress plate right now. DeMarco pops that one up. I mean, folks, this is its just all-time great. And, and, oh, by the way, left, center, center, and right with his homers. All the while playing as good a shortstop as anybody can play and and seemingly handling things in stride. Davidson, man, you rarely see that. Great defensive shortstop. Booting one there, and I'm sure the situation has something to do with that. Yeah, just his eighth air on the year. He has been rock solid at shortstop all season long. That guy's the best in the country at the position. And he did have time last night to tell you that he thinks LeBron is going to win a game in the finals. Yeah, we, we revisited that today in the batting cage. He was he was sure of it. He did not think tonight would be that night, though. Fourteen to five. Bandy eliminated Clemson, winning by eight runs last year. They're up nine in the seventh with Ethan Paul at the plate. And with that error that Davidson committed, while DeMarco hasn't gotten a hit, every Vanderbilt player or current player in their lineup has been on base. Last year it was Will Toffey hitting two home runs and driving in five in a regional final game. That was game seven. This year appears to be Connor Kaiser's turn. Three and nine in a regional final game. You know Stephen Scott and Philip Clark both have two home runs tonight, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, oh by the oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> Marco taking off, and while some may not like that, up nine, I got to say, you have to leave no doubt, right? In a no. game like this, you, Clemson's got the best offensive team in power conference baseball. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's a regional final. You got nine outs still to get, and an offense at second in the country in homers. Corbin put the brakes on him right there. That's it in the air. Beer goes back to the wall, has a play as he's shy of the wall for the final out of the inning. The onslaught continues. 
Steven Scott goes yard for the second time. Connor Kaiser for the third. Those are all seven home runs tonight. A Vanderbilt record. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Clemson, South Carolina, site of where Vanderbilt won the regional last year. And they're up 14 to five with a school record seven home runs in this game off Clemson pitchers. Running out of superlatives, but we did find this out. Connor Kaiser is one home run and one RBI short of the NCAA record in the tournament. Four and ten is the record. He has tied the school record for home runs and RBI in one game. David Joyner did it against Samford in 1987. Steven Scott's got two. Philip Clark's got two. Connor Kaiser has three. They're hogging all the fun right now. Remember that two zip win they had against St. John's, that great pitcher's duel we had on Friday? Yeah. <laughs> we watched Clemson beat St. John's 9-8 to eight earlier today. 17 runs combined in that one, 19 in this one so far. And Clemson still has, or Vanderbilt still has nine outs to get as Kier Meredith is on base to start the seventh after a wild throw. You rarely see that from Kaiser. He's got one error in more than 220 attempts. Let's see how they score this. That is his second of the season. Jackson Gillis, who pitched the seventh last night, is back out there again to work the same frame in this one. Yeah, I know Connor Kaiser has got to be tickled with the night he's having offensively, but knowing him a little bit like I do, I'm sure he's ticked that he just threw that one away. Davidson gets underneath it. Kaiser makes the play here, one down. All-time great night. He is having a Vanderbilt all-time great night. As long as they play baseball on Nashville's West End at Vanderbilt University, they will be talking about the night that their offense is having tonight, specifically Connor Kaiser. Depending on how many more Clemson batters reach base, this could be Seth Beers' last at bat in a Clemson uniform. The record you see for Tigers home runs is 59. Andy Baker, or Baker and D'Alessio both have 59 in the Clemson record books. But he's done it in three years. You think that he might project as simply a designated hitter as the, at the next level? Oh, no, they're, they're certainly going to give him a chance to play right field. He's, he is impressed in right field this year based on what some thought he could do. So he'll get his chance out there. But if he needs to move to DH, obviously the bat is, if it, if it plays the way most think it will, that it, it's valuable enough to do that. greatest careers in your conference, the SEC's history in a, in a different way, but still so impressive and so celebrated. What is this transition like once you get drafted in the next few months of the summer? It seems like it would be one of the biggest it is. that you would ever go through. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge adjustment. And I, I think it's probably not as big a deal these days uh, from changing from aluminum to wood as it was when 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 I played because the bats are perform more like wood now and, and the kids grew up using wood way more than we did so I think that piece of it's different but this environment you know coming from this environment playing on these kind of stages that immediately goes away you know the minor league game is there's better facilities now than ever but still it just the 
the will to win, the focus on winning, the camaraderie with your teammates, the relationships with your teammates, those things immediately change. It certainly becomes more of a business. And the atmosphere kind of on a daily basis is it takes an adjustment. It gets away and Meredith goes down to second base. And you go from being one of the five most identifiable people in town to nobody knowing who you are, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if he's a first rounder, there there'll be some there'll be some people know who he is, but yeah, it, it, look, it's different. It, it's a different deal. You, you play with, you start playing with guys from all over the place, and you know, different cultures and different backgrounds, and you know, there's no telling what part of the country they send you to. So, there's a lot to learn. But it, it's a beautiful ride. Strikes out. Two down in the seventh. Boy, has he seen a bunch of left-handers in this region or what? I mean, everybody's throwing lefties. And he gets a nice round of applause from the home crowd who are recognizing that that might be his last turn at bat. That's his father, Mike, watching on. He really is a first-class guy. He, he's represented this school in a, in a great way. He's been a terrific teammate. Doesn't have a sense of entitlement or... No. He's not a prima donna. He's, he's one of the guys. Chris Williams is, too, and swings through that one. He hit a home run back in the fourth. Yeah, some, some Tigers that have had fantastic careers maybe coming to bat for the last time. Meanwhile, Jackson Gillis picking up where he left off last night. Just missing me. Struck out three in an inning and a third, giving up only one hit to the Tigers. Pitching parts of the sixth and the seventh inning in last night's victory. The bullpen is has dazzled. It really has. Coming into the year, the, the Vanderbilt coaching staff was very open about their talent, but also about the lack of pitchability and not exactly sure how all the pieces were going to fit together. And it's taken a while, but they've set it on a pretty good formula. Hit sharply down the line. It will score Meredith. And it's two bags for Chris Williams. And that's a nice moment right there. Williams has been on base three times tonight, homered, walked, and now doubled. What might be his final game as a Clemson Tiger? Now the catcher, Kyle Wilkie, who homered his last time up. to look around the country at some other scores. FAU and Jacksonville in a weather delay. Ole Miss just three outs away 
from getting to the regional final. They're a game or day behind there due to weather. Duke clobbering Troy in an elimination game. They also will have to go into tomorrow. Winner of that East Carolina UNCW game will play South Carolina. And Washington a couple outs away from the Super Regionals. North Carolina up seven on the Cougars. Could be hosting at Boschimer Stadium next weekend. Auburn, 25 minutes down the road in Raleigh, is in good control of that regional. And finally, Stanford must beat Fullerton twice. Yeah. Texas Tech in pretty good shape. I, I tell you, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out, but Mississippi State up 9-1 to one right now in Oklahoma early in the ball game. If they get to game seven tomorrow, you could end up with a Vanderbilt-Mississippi State super. Looks like we're going to end up with a Florida-Auburn super. You maybe could end up with an Arkansas-South Carolina super. You might end up with three super regionals featuring all SEC teams. One more team to salute Minnesota in good control. About to head to the Super Regionals if they hold on. Another meeting of the minds. With Vanderbilt up 14 to 6 on Clemson here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Vandy setting a school record with seven home runs tonight. Here is a potential super regional look. If Vanderbilt advances, chances are they would be hosting next weekend against either Oklahoma or Mississippi State. Mississippi State hammering Oklahoma tonight. Yeah, and if they're able to close that out, that would be a rematch of a opening SEC weekend series where Vanderbilt swept Mississippi State. Now that was a Mississippi State team that looked very different than the one that's playing today. But you can say the same thing about Vanderbilt. Both runners move up 90 feet on a ball that land that caromed off the backstop back into Scott's glove. Jackson Gillis Looked really sharp last night. Not nearly the same tonight. How about this bounce? Right off the top of the concrete, of the just above the padding. And to his defense, there was a, a lead off air, or he'd be off the field right now. Everything from here, even the run that Williams drove in was unearned. Wharton does have a single and scored in the fifth. One and one. Clemson team, you know they're going to go down swinging. Letting it rip right there on a one-two pitch. Nice pop foul. Still one and two. Clemson needs to mount a miracle comeback to force a game on Monday. Just can't get rid of him. 
Drew Wharton doing a great job of hanging in there, battling with two strikes. Gillis tried to change up there, threw it up around the neck. Wharton still pulled the trigger. Anytime you got a hitter in swing mode like this, it's always a good idea, especially in a one-two count. Try to bounce one. See if you can get him to expand the zone on you. You got at least a couple pitches to play with here on a one-two count. Popped him up. This could be no man's land, and it is. It's a foul ball. Well, that ball was in the air a long time, wasn't it? Thought J.J. Bladé had a play on this ball, but he starts looking at Ethan Paul early. It lands really close to his feet. Can Wharton make them pay? out for Gillis on Wharton and Vandy's lead is 14 to 6. Let's count them up. A school record seven home runs tonight for the Vanderbilt Commodores. A couple from Steven Scott, two more from Philip Clark, and three for Connor Kaiser including nine RBI. In total, it's been one of the most prolific nights the team from Nashville's ever had. And I, I tell you what, I got to tip my cap to him. He, he's handled it with a tremendous amount of humility. There hasn't been an ounce of showboating to anything about his performance tonight. Looking at him right now, you wouldn't know whether he was 0 for 4 or having a, one of the greatest nights in school history. It's It's been awfully impressive to watch. And here is Julian Infante. He wants an eighth homer, and he's got it. He has been in a season-long slump, just his second home run of 2018, bringing a smile to the face of all of his teammates. Yeah, I got to believe they're, they're happy for him. It's been a struggle offensively, and he joins the party. Vanderbilt just continues to put on a home run show. different players eight home runs in total 15 total runs and here's Harrison Ray that's number nine Clark and Scott and Kaiser have been hogging the, the glory, and Fonte and Ray decided to join the party, Taylor. A bomb from Infante, and then a fastball at the top of the zone that Ray launches, and wow, we've run out of superlatives, bro. Yes, we have, as the doors are now up 10 in the eighth. You can't take a knee in baseball. No. You got to keep swinging. This feels like USC and Arizona State in Omaha in 97 or so. That'll do it for Ryan Huggins. As Clemson will make a pitching change. All Commodore power bats tonight.
the crowd at TD Ameritrade comes to its feet. Can't the flame. Vandy's victorious. They win the 2014 College World Series. That was four years ago, of course, three years ago. They got back to the championship series, losing to Virginia. But these Vanderbilt Commodores, none of which were on that championship team four years ago, they want to be part of that in Omaha. Yeah, and I, again, we, we, we've hit it a couple times tonight. No, nobody really saw this coming. I, I think... Blade came back and Steven Scott got hot and you thought, okay, it's, you know, I think they got a competitive chance to go win a regional. The pitching staff looks pretty good, but boy, the way they're playing tonight, it's hard to put a cap on what this club's capable of. I don't think anyone would like to run into them at this moment. The only potential good news for Oklahoma or Mississippi State is that Vandy can't play for five or six days. Yeah. Good pitch. This is Sam Weatherly that's out there on the mound now for Clemson. And you don't have to play them here. <laughs> I mean, they seem to like hitting at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. It's an option. Ball four. Martin's been on base three times tonight. And here's Steven Scott, who's homered twice. And how about that? Wow. One more to break the record, tied with Arkansas and Southern Illinois. The Salukis back in 1969. None of those are from the crazy bat era. Can we see that one more time? The, the Salukis had the record forever. Yeah, they did. By themselves. Come on, Sam. Scott grounds it to first, where Williams will take it himself for the first out of the inning. So they had the record for 41 years for the Razorbacks joined them in 2010. And now Vandy has joined the party. Incredible. And I'm, mm, I'm about 50-50 saying that's going to fall tonight. Yeah, there's a pretty good shot. They, they still have five outs left. Washington advanced the Super Regionals, by the way. Huskies in, as predicted by you. If you had that in your pool, that's a winner. Certainly the Hatters look like they're on their way, as does Texas Tech. North Carolina in very good shape. Minnesota got a chance to go to a Super Regional. The only problem with Kaiser being on deck here is that there are people on base, and he needs a solo home run for the home run cycle. Yeah, the nubber, Weatherly, two down. Here's what Connor Kaiser has done tonight. Well, it, it's it started with a hanging breaking ball that was blasted way out of the ballpark to left center field, and you're thinking, okay. And then how about a little Apo Taco Salami? You like salami on your taco, brother? And then to Dead Central for the hat trick. Nine steaks and Apo Taco with salami on it. And overall, three bombs and an all-time great night. Chance for another Johnson, as you say here. Instead, it's a ball hit that Davidson plays on a hop. It's a single and an RBI, and he's got 10 on the night. And that, that ties the record, right? 10 RBI ties the NCAA record? Yes, sir. And I think Kevin Brown on that list, there was a Kevin Brown from the University of Miami from 2001. We played 
Miami first game of the College World Series, and the final score was 21-14. to 14. He, he might have put that 10 spot on us. I don't know specifically, but I'm guessing there was some obscene amount of hits that night. Clark has two home runs. So just have confirmation that wasn't against us. I did I did bring back flashbacks of him launching balls against us in Omaha, though. But apparently he didn't get 10 against us, so that's good to know. That was one of Miami's two championships under Jim Morris. That's it sharply for another hit. Clark has three of them tonight. Yeah, Clark, Clark's got a chance to be a, an All-American kind of hitter. I don't know where he fits in defensively, but he can really swing the bat. 17, 16, and 1 for Vanderbilt. 6, 8, and 1 for Clemson. Now, DeMarco does not have a hit tonight. He did reach base on an error in the last inning. Yeah, kind of weird for him not to be in the middle of the party. One of the big playmakers all year long for this offense. Jason Gonzalez did start the game and struck out twice, but Harrison Ray pinched hit for him, and he's walked and homered. And there it is. Every current member of the Commodore lineup has a base hit. It's just a deflating night to, for the Clemson Tigers. So much hope when you're 45 and 14 coming into a regional. You win the ACC regular season title, tying Florida or winning the Atlantic Division, tying North Carolina for the regular season crown. They were ranked as high as number two in the country at one point. And to have your season in like this for a third consecutive year and, and to do it in this fashion I know is going to be something that sticks with these guys for a while. Well, uh, Monty Lee, I'm sure, will use it as motivation. There's you know, a lot of production leaving this club, so there's it's going to be an offseason full of competition. This now his third year, so I'm sure they have a first-class recruiting class coming into town. This has popped up, but Bird and Jolly run out of room. These days when you take a job, there's so many early commitments that sometimes the recruits are committed years in advance. So for Monty Lee, this, this incoming 2018 class will be really one of the first ones that he started recruiting on kind of a level playing field with, with the – schools that they do battle with specifically in the in the state of Georgia and South Carolina so we'll start to see some of the fruit of their initial recruiting efforts start showing up to campus we do know Logan Davidson will be back he'll be the face of the team yep. next year Kyle Wilkie will be back Jordan Green Grayson Bird has another year of eligibility Closer Riley Gilliam is a junior. Probably lose him. See what happens with him in the next few days. Didn't mean to. And the side is retired. Three more runs, two more homers for Vanderbilt. Connor Kaiser with 10 RBI tonight, tying an NCAA tournament record. Smile, Connor. About to close it out. 17 to 6. Not a football score. Well, it is a football score, but it's not a football game. 
Vanderbilt with its most prolific night hitting the long ball in school history. And here's the bracket. Vandy with a win is in the Super Regionals and most likely will be hosting in Nashville next weekend against either Oklahoma or Mississippi State. Mississippi State pouring it on the Sooners tonight to force a winner-take-all game tomorrow. Yeah, they're looking pretty impressive. And, and speaking of impressive, Tyler Brown takes the mound, a big right-hander, freshman from Ashland, Ohio. He can run it up there in the mid-90s, too. Another freshman that the numbers don't look great, but you can see that more than one strikeout per inning. He's a strike thrower, just eight walks and 34 and two-thirds. So getting another look at the talent in this Vanderbilt bullpen. Freshman from Ashland, Ohio, has not pitched since May 22nd. Ty Duvall is the new catcher for Vanderbilt as well. Ole Miss just one out away from going to the, advancing to the regional final. Grayson Bird, strike one. It's going to be fun to watch Stetson the next couple of weeks, see how far they can go. Yeah, It's always fun to see that smaller conference team and how they fare this time of year. Oh, yeah. I mean, can they can they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Power 5 school and a Super Regional? That will be a really interesting storyline to follow. Bird with a chopper. Kaiser gets Bird to start the eighth. That's the first time tonight that Bird hadn't hit a bullet. Kaiser erases him. Green up 0 for 3 tonight. How surprised were you two years ago when Coastal Carolina won the national championship? I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty hard to do. I mean, obviously it's hard to do no matter who you are, but you just you always wonder can it can a mid major do they have the pitching depth? And that was a team that you know they have they really didn't have a lot of depth, but they had five guys that that really performed at a just an incredible level, and and it's funny because. Really, it takes more depth a lot of times to get through the regional than it does the, the Super or, or Omaha. I mean, Omaha, if you win, if you can keep winning, you really only need about five guys, six guys tops, just because all the days off that are built in. So, you, you know, everybody knew that year they could rake. But you're going, okay, well, you rake, but you're going to a place that's not very offensive in TD Ameritrade, such a big park. Is that style of play going to hold up? But then all of a sudden they get there and you're going, wow, they can really pitch. Green go, 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 go. up the middle. Paul. Wow. And still had time to get green. That's a heck of a play right there. How about cutting it off right before the base? Gets a really good jump and gets to it before the base. And then you got to throw that ball back across your body. Nice job. Kind of caught it to the side of the base, actually. But the throw, as you're running toward third, towards third base, the angle is extremely difficult. Nice play by Ethan Paul. Robert Jolly's final collegiate at bat. Senior from Myrtle Beach. talk about coming full circle. Robert's father, Jack, was a pitcher at Coastal Carolina. There you go. Yeah, he's from Myrtle Beach. Makes sense. 
Graduated on May 11th with a degree in Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Management. This is his 100th start of his career. Just two lifetime home runs. And for some of these guys, maybe Jolly included, this is the last time they play baseball. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of different options to, to keep playing the game more than there ever has. But, you know, some guys, they're going to go in a different direction. Some guys like Seth Beer are going to play for a very long time. Either way, it's always an emotional time when you take that last at bat in college. Minnesota pouring it on UCLA, 13 to 5. Ole Miss has given up a couple runs in the bottom of the ninth. It's now 9 to 8. Ole Miss. Arkansas takes the lead on Dallas Baptist. A win away from another super regional. Fullerton with an e early lead on Stanford. They need one more win after the walk off homer that the Titans got last night. We get a chance to have two teams go to the same regional and win on the road back-to-back -back years. Here with Vanderbilt and there with Fullerton. The Huskies validating their at-large selection they without certainly a question. Did. I'm not even sure they were in the field before the last week of the Pac-12 yeah. regular season. Ole Miss, first and third, two outs in the ninth, clinging to a one-run lead. Mm. They could get walked off on their home field. Hit back to Paul, and the side is retired. We go to the ninth inning, Vanderbilt pouring it on once again in Clemson. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? Vanderbilt with an onslaught. At Clemson tonight, 17 runs on 17 hits, including nine home runs. Julian Infante went deep his last time. Every single player in the current lineup has a base hit. Yeah, it's kind of silly looking, isn't it? Five of them have home runs including Austin Kaiser, who has three, who has tied the Vanderbilt record for home runs in a game and tied the NCAA tournament record for RBI in one game with 10. Not too often you're in a place where you know you'll remember a player's performance forever. Not only will we, but everybody who was watching and Vanderbilt baseball history will will never forget the day. The whole team has had for sure, but specifically Connor Kaiser, an all-time great day. He does not show a lot of emotion. Infante rips one off the wall. And that's a loud single, hit it too hard. So the Clemson Tigers are going to end their season tonight with a 47-16 and 16 record, losing as a host team in the regionals for the third consecutive year. And here are some of the guys that are playing in their last game. 
And Riley Gilliam might also be on that list. He's a junior and could be drafted in the next couple of days. You know Beer's gone and all those seniors. As Ray bats after a homer his last time up. Seth Beer will get one more at bat. Drew Wharton, Chris Williams. It's been a heck of a run in these last three years, and I think that some of this pain will subside after a while, and they'll have a lot of great memories to reflect on, but I don't know that they'll be watching much of the rest of this tournament. No, it's got to sting. I mean, it just it has to. As, as much as they put into putting Clemson baseball back on the map to where they where this fan base is is desiring it for it to be and it seemed like they had a chance each year they're you know really playing well had terrific regular seasons they just haven't been able to get over the hump but but boy those those guys have been a part of a lot of wins and they got a away. lot to be proud of fonte goes down to second and the seniors been part of two different eras. You know, they, they said goodbye to Jack Leckett, ushered in Monty Lee. So kind of a class that gets to gets to say they're part of the past and the future. Ray hits that one hard. Right at Wharton, one down. Well, the crazy thing is, is you just never know if Clemson, which I would expect to be a tournament team again next year. Oh, yeah. If they have, let's say, a lighter regular season than they had this year, if you get in, you got a shot. And who would be surprised if they got to a Super Regional next year, just like Vanderbilt's doing this season with a team that wasn't expected to be one of the top 10, 15 teams in college baseball. Yeah, it's pretty hard to pretty hard to predict how it's going to go once you get to the postseason but one thing's for sure they'll be back uh, Monty Lee's got this thing running at a pretty high level Garrett Blaylock's going to pinch it for Austin Martin here freshman from Asheville North Carolina He had a big pinch hit single in the ninth inning against Tennessee a couple of weeks ago that helped Vandy turn things around. Update for you, Ole Miss pitched out of it. Ole and won. They, they won the game, ended with first and third. The winning run was on first, the tying run was on third, and Houston Roth pitched out of it. So Ole Miss and in the driver's seat there, 2-0 and in the Oxford Regional, and a regional that was pushed back a day due to weather. Auburn now pouring it on North Carolina State, up 10-3 to in that one. And that's ball four. Here is, here are some things that have already taken shape across the country. Washington going to the Super Regionals for the first time ever. I know Seattle will be excited about that. Same with Stetson in 18 tries. Imagine how loud Delan was today. Oh my goodness. And NC State, who at one time was one of the two or three best teams in college baseball, down to their last few outs. Auburn hadn't been there since 99, Taylor. Hadn't been to Omaha since 97. How about Auburn and Florida next weekend in the regional, in the re super regionals in Gainesville? That'll be a fun one. And it hasn't happened yet. Florida still yep. has some work to be done. But that, that would be a fun one. And Again, it looks like Mississippi State's in a good position where it could end up they'll have a chance tomorrow if they can beat Oklahoma to 
to make that one an all-SEC super. And then you could end up with Arkansas versus South Carolina. Steven Scott and the Vanderbilt Commodores with a huge night tonight. He had two home runs in this game and then gave way to Ty Duvall, who's at the plate now and Weatherly struggling with his command. The runners move up 90 more feet. How about Kyle Wilkie? All day long, he's been back there behind that plate. Catching 18 innings. That's pretty impressive. He caught a pitch at noon today, and we're almost to 10 o'clock. it hard but beers there two down that one had the sound I guess he caught it towards the end but that one had the sound off the bat Seth Beard never had to move you kind of I'm almost a little bit shell-shocked by all these balls Vanderbilt's hit out every time they catch one that sounds loud you're, you're thinking it's headed for the seats Suddenly, the Houston Cougars. Yeah, making a run. Making a run at the Tar Heels, 14-11. Down the road, Auburn whipping NC State. Base hit, the score a run. So it's 18-6. Connor Kaiser said one of the greatest nights in Vanderbilt history, and he is back at the plate now. Got a chance to set the NCAA all-time record for RBIs in a postseason game. Three home runs. He's had another base hit. He's hit a home run to left, a, a three-run homer to left center, a grand slam to right, a two-run two homer to dead center, an RBI base hit in a six-hole. Three home runs, ten RBI, and he's got another crack at it right here. Good pitch. Fifth inning. This was a 6 3 game. Fandy on top. And Davidson and Beer both came to the plate with a chance to be the go ahead run. It could hit a grand slam and given Clemson the lead. And yeah. With those missed opportunities, the game basically was out of reach after that. Wilkie can't find it. It goes back to the wall. Bounces off and another run comes in. So it's 19 to 6 now. So Vandy's outscored Clemson 13 to 3 since that point. Yeah, I, I think the, the story from the Clemson side of things is, yeah, they had some chances maybe to, to keep it close early, but the, the pitching staff just was taxed too much early, specifically the bullpen was taxed so much early against Moorhead State, Vandy, and St. John's in their first three games that they just they didn't have enough here in this one. Back through the box, green, and they can't dig it out. Runners at the corners. I think that one should go as a hit. Let's see what they call it. They're going E4. Clemson's had some 
uh, tough moments that have seemed to harden each of their wonderful programs. I'm thinking about what happened in Miami in the Orange Bowl a few years back when West Virginia scored 70. Ever since then, Clemson has been as good as any program yeah. in college football. I mean, your toughest moment can make yeah. you even better, and, and maybe that's the case with this program tonight. That's well said. One more out to get in the top of the ninth. Welcome back to Omaha. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do this. That one is got to go. A grand slam. And it's caught. Cool. Oh, no way. That's filthy. The Capone with it. Boom. And they dog pile and the mound in it. You love that place, don't you? Oh, man, I'm all fired up. Your picks are looking pretty good. Knowles are the only one that are out. It's kind of like making your Sweet 16 picks before the tournament starts, right? You, yeah. You're not going to get all of them. No. Uh, let's see how many uh, How many do I still have alive. I got, I lo I'm out on Florida State. That's it right now. Louisville's not looking so hot. Houston in trouble. This is Riley Gilliam in there is a chance this is the last time he plays for the Clemson Tigers. Junior from Kennesaw, Georgia, who's been the closer for Clemson this season. He struggled earlier today in the victory over St. John's. Yeah, he did. Still overall a really good season. Oh, he's had a fantastic season. He's been the rock on the back end of this bullpen. Philip Clark with two home runs tonight. Bandy with nine in total. Previous mark was seven in a game in 1991. Houston has the bases loaded. It's a weather delay at 14 to 11. Oh, my goodness. How about that? Couldn't hold on to it. If this is the last batter that Gilliam faces in a Clemson uniform, 11 saves this season, 15 in his career, pitching over 100 innings with a career ERA just over three, but an ERA just over one this year. You're shot it. I'm shell shocked. You're, sh you're shell shocked after all you've seen tonight. That man will have one more at bat in a Clemson uniform. What a night for Vanderbilt, leading 19 to six against one of the top seeds in the country, the Clemson Tigers. Just three outs away from the Super Regionals. St. John's had a tournament win. Moorhead State fought their hearts out on Friday night, losing to Clemson in 10 innings. Clemson came back and won an elimination game today. But the Vanderbilt Commodores are going to go 3-0 and in this regional as we start things in the ninth inning. Got a pinch hitter here, Adam Renwick. Adam Renwick batting for the final time in his career. Nice nod by Coach Lee to get these seniors in. The senior from Spartanburg, South Carolina. 
one and two. And that's a strikeout, but congratulations to Renwick on his career and all that he has done for Clemson, one down. And these fans showing you just how classy they are, giving standing ovations to all the players who are performing for the last time here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Patrick Cromwell will now do the same. Another senior from Costa Mesa, California. He transferred in from Santa Ana College. And he has struggled his last few weeks. Be nice to see him get a hit here. Beer is on deck. Hits that into right field, but right at Blade. Seth Beer, a three time first team all American coming up to the plate for the final time as a Clemson Tiger this home crowd would like one more long one one more long one from the power hitter he tried his best got underneath it DeMarco comes in the Vanderbilt Commodores are in the Super Regionals for the seventh time in the last nine seasons incredible performance just a Offensive onslaught that was really legendary, especially as it pertains to Connor Kaiser. Five hits, three home runs, 10 RBIs. One of the great days in postseason history. They set a school record for home runs, and of course, the pitching staff continues to perform at a high level. It's a Vandy team that looks awfully dangerous. 